Christy people suck. <laughs> wow. Wolverine on it. Back in the days when we played video games, it was hardcore for the nerdy and lazy. Now things have changed, and all our video games are also for the casual and lady. But that's okay, you know the score. We told you a million times before. Playing consoles, not just games, is in the past. Another episode of N4G Radio. This is episode 679 for December 6th, 2021. And on the show this week, we have Anthony. Hello. And we'll have Drew joining us momentarily. This December. Are you... Are you watching the Mariah Carey special and counting down the days to Christmas? I'd rather kill myself. That's lovely. Yeah. I worked retail, I've heard that song more times than most people. That's true. It's people always think it's like, oh, it's last Christmas, right? That that's that was always the joke. Like how can you how long can you make it before you hear not a cover, but the original last Christmas? Um, from uh, Wham. And I'm going to straight up say it, that wham, last Christmas, not an issue. Um, because the big problem is, is that when you're working in an environment where like Christmas music is being played, you can sort of dr- like just drown it out. With, like Eventually, it just becomes background noise. However, there are certain songs that will absolutely make sure that they are heard. Um, I mean, and that, that goes for all like just even regular music throughout the year. Um, I can't remember what song it was from um, Muse, but Muse had a song that would just it didn't flow with everything else, and it was just jarring. And every time it came on, you'd you'd know because it just doesn't sound right in the flow of things. It doesn't go into the background music sort of ness of like. You know, Muzak, which is for anyone that doesn't know, it, uh, a service that you pay that plays essentially just safe music. There's different options. There's a country Muzak channel. There's like a couple versions of the hits, which I think one is like more modern mixed with some older stuff. And then there's more older stuff um, as another option. Old. And then, you know, they put... Yeah, the, but then there's an oldies one too. Like, it's... There's like six or seven channels that you pay into this service. Anyways, um, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You is one, and Paul McCartney simply having a wonderful Christmas time is another, where it's just like, oh, fuck, I can't, I can't hear this song again. <laughs> I just can't do it. But and like, they're not, year. they're not bad songs, but like, yes, but over the course of a month, I should not hear the same song. Like, there's not enough Christmas songs. There just is not enough Christmas songs. Which is crazy, because there's a lot of Christmas songs. It's just... Right, but there, there really isn't. Because what you're really hearing is a bunch of renditions of the same 25 songs. That's why they should get Easy E's Merry Motherfucking Christmas and put it on there. I mean, well, I'm not against that. I don't think that'll fly. You don't think it, 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 like a family be walking around, you know, Target and hear "Merry Motherfucking Christmas." Well, Target doesn't play music and have a fucked up New Year. Target doesn't have music. That's, so. that's a shame. They're too snobby. No, it's not. No, it's not. As as a person that has worked in fucking environments, let me tell you, there's a version of uh, "You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch" that is just. It would play all the time when I worked at Zellers, and I was like, I really fucking can't stand this. Now, what a good 
A good way to solve the Christmas issue is just play regular music with the occasional Christmas song. Do they still play the creepy baby it's cold outside? I don't recall. I mean, it depends on how you're fucking singing that song. It, m- most versions of it sound like two people being a little bit playful with each other. Like, flirty. So, you know, context is fucking everything. Um, well, context should probably wear a rubber. It, absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, I just fucking hate Christmas music. Anyways, sorry, this is a ga- video game podcast, and I've gone off for a couple minutes about yeah, but it's Christmas. fucking retail. It's Christmas it's- time. Christmas fucking sucks. I like Christmas. Oh, fuck you. I have kids. Well, I have a yeah. kid, so Christmas is great. Oh, great. You know, they, they get very happy around this time of year. They get all excited. Like, it, it, it takes you back to you when you were a kid, being excited, counting down the days. So if they don't have calendars anymore like we used to, you know, where we'd mark off the day with a Sharpie. No, we have this giant wooden thing in the living room with, like, yeah, you can the reuse day. your for, yeah, reuse every year. Yep, every year and every year. They still make advent calendars with that cheap chocolate. I like the. I whenever I think of those, I always think of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation with the doors. Which I watched. I haven't seen that movie in years because I, again, I'm not a Christmas person. Oh, I watch that movie every year. I'm already. It's a good. It's a good movie. Don't get me wrong. There, there's genuinely hilarious moments in that, and then they try to make a sequel that was terrible. Yeah, I don't bother but, with the sequel, but every year I, I have my 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 laundry list of Christmas movies I got to watch, and Eight Bit Christmas is now in that rotation. I, I will say, Fucking, I just don't get it. I'm sorry, I've never been like when I was a kid. It made sense, but I'm an adult and like as soon as i started working in retail i was like yeah i'm kind of done with christmas maybe when you have kids oh i said maybe yeah. i don't know yeah m- maybe being the keyword <laughs> fucking but i'm i'm ahead of the game this year i've already watched elf i've already watched Apex i can't christmas. i can't do like you know what christmas time I I can put it as like it is like having someone tell you about how good the office is. But it's a month dedicated to it because they won't do it any other time of year because it doesn't make sense. So it's just like people start quoting every fucking movie that they know, specifically Elf, and it's the same fucking songs and it's like the worst of fandom <laughs> compressed into a month. I will I will give you a shocking revelation until this year I had not seen Elf. This was the first year I'd seen it. And what did you think? It had some moments. It's it's a good... It's a, Listen, I'm not saying any of this stuff is bad. I'm saying this. all this stuff is like at best good seasonal. I think Elf is on the higher end of good to be fair. I think that it's a very smart movie that did something very different. But, like, it's been years of this now. We need something new. We have a big Christmas. Watch it. And I'm, I'm not, because I'm already out of it. It's like, like when I said it was, like, the worst of fandom, it's like, we have one season of a TV show, and everybody just quotes that. Like, it, it, because there's nothing... It's just, like, every year we go through this same shit, and the same people get excited, and I'm just like, don't... You couldn't sell me on it the first time. <laughs> hey, I'm not trying to sell you on it. I'm telling you about my experience. Yeah, I, I, I know, but it's just like, it's, it's, it's... Do you want to hear about Yakuza, or not Yakuza, um, Shenmue for like a month? No? I mean, I do. It. That's, I gotta that, hear that's... it all the time. But that's, but what I'm saying is compress that down to a month. Unfortunately, where everybody gets it all out. I've had to listen to everybody talk about Shinmu for twenty five years because that's how long it took hey, for them to make a like third. Christmas is Christmas, like you're saying that like Christmas hasn't been around twenty. Yeah, years. but I don't have to years. listen to Christmas stuff all yeah. year round. Shen- whereas Shinmu, yeah, but, Shen- but Shenmue also doesn't play o- music, doesn't play over the radio, and be the only thing on the radio. Now you probably have to use the D-pad. take over. It doesn't take over everything. 
it's like when Star Wars comes out, you're it's a real bad time to not be a fan of Star Wars. Yeah. You know, like it's just like like fuck, I got it. There's there's so many there's so much of that now on the internet though, like people going nuts over Spider Man and I like Spider Man but I don't need it injected into my veins like and that's where I feel like Christmas is uh, Halloween I think take a good strong hit because of COVID where it's not the same anymore um I think Halloween though is like has a few more options like you have more horror movies like some people take it more of a scary route some people take it more of as a fun thing for kids and i know there's a little there's and then you know each of those have a bunch of branches off but like christmas what do you got you got jesus you got santa trees stars red green maybe I, some golden white I that's know. that there it is there's there's christmas summed up i told my wife the other day i was gonna start being that asshole that is the Thanksgiving decorator. So, like, the day after Halloween, I'm going to put up, like, orange and brown lights and big fucking blow-up turkeys in the yard. Yeah. Just because nobody appreciates Thanksgiving. Listen, I... Ours, yeah, yeah, it doesn't really work up here in Canada because of when our Thanksgiving is. So. Mm. Oh, no, I thought, I thought that was... Anyway, but... video games, you want to talk about those? Yeah. No, I'd rather bitch about Christmas. <laughs> Um, I know. Do you want to go on a tirade about uh, St. Patty's Day or something? Okay, Valentine's let me tell you about Day. St. Patty's Day. Hold on. Let me tell you about St. Patty's uh, Day. No, no. Let's no, talk no, about video no. Games. Now we we re- no <laughs> we we've gone down. I have to tell this story now. So when I was in college, and people will figure out where I went to college from this, I'm sure, but I don't care. When I was in college, St. Patty's Day was kind of notorious because people would get really drunk and not show up to school. Um. Now, I'm sure that it wasn't helped by the fact that there was a bar inside the school. Higher education. To. Higher education, everybody. Um, and so across the street was like a... There were houses, but it ended up being almost stu- student housing. Um, you know, there was a couple families that lived in there, but for the most part, it was kids would move in during the school year. Some would stay around, others would leave. But parties would happen a lot. And uh, one St. Patty's Day got a little much. So the the news showed up, showing the destruction that was happening. And uh, some smartasses flipped the news van and set it on fire. Okay. And, I mean, eventually that kind of explodes. <laughs> Not like a huge explosion, but it does turn into a fireball. Yeah, it's not and, like the uh, movie. It shit. melts it. Yeah, it melts it to the pavement. And uh, yeah, uh, now to the short of it was for a short while, people would be like, "I'm not hiring people from that school ever when they graduate. It's all terrible people. Like everyone was involved, dumbasses. No one wants to work for you." Um, but it ended up being mostly the this university students from the same city. And people from out of town coming to party, and some high school students of all things. But uh, yeah, the next day you got to drive by the rem- the smoldering remnants of a news van, <laughs> and that's why St. Bat- Patty's Day was basically banned. <laughs> well then, yeah. All right, now video games. Ready for that? Yeah. Now? So I've only played. Yeah, I've only played one. Okay. Um, I had to do paperwork for my new job um, because technically I'm still training and I had to fill that out uh, because I'm shifting where I am. So like I was training in one location, now I'm moving to where I'll be staying. So I only had time for one, and it's the one that you handed me on Friday. And that is uh, Big Brain Academy. I don't remember the subtitle. I was going to say, Brain... I gave you two games on Friday, but I was, I was yeah, cute. like the suspense was killing me. Okay, so Big Brain Academy, Brain vs. Brain. Okay. Now, I played the original Big Brain Academy on the DS, and I uh, thought it was good. It was, it, was, it was weird because it was another Nintendo property, and I think it didn't hit as well because... Like, it did okay, but it didn't hit as well because it was a cartoony version when they also owned Brain Age. 
But I hate Brain Age. Um, oh, I thought you liked Brain Age. Brain Age is Brain Age was okay. The problem was it had issues like with the Stroop test. Now I already have a speech impediment that I do pretty well to talk around, but then like you're doing the Stroop test, which if anybody doesn't know, it's where it shows you like a color written out as a word, and then that word is colored. And I believe you have to say what the color is, not what the word is. Oh, Regardless, so like if the word red was written in green. Yeah, you have to say green. Gotcha. It, it's challenging as as you go further. It, it, it seems simplistic in nature. I could have it the opposite way around. You might have to say the word and not the color, but I believe you have to say the color. Anyway, doesn't the matter. Color, the color would make more sense. It seems like it's harder to, to make your yes. brain not say the word. Word. Yeah, I be, that's why I believe it is. Anyways, regardless, the... The problem with it is that from my under it didn't pick up the like what you were saying. So if I said yellow or blue, it had an issue. But red it always seemed to be fine with. Green it always seemed to be fine with. Um and from my understanding, if you say it with a slightly racist Asian accent as br or yarrow, it picks it up. Oh my because, so Yeah. Whoa. Because so so to explain that to people though it's because Japan doesn't have an L or an R sound it has like a combined sort of sound so um, it to them that would be correct but if they only tested it and designed it with Japanese audiences first and foremost and that was who did the English part portion too like that's a fuck up. Um, and now I did I did think they were okay, but they kind of the, that series overstayed its welcome. And Big Brain Academy, it, the thing with um, Brain Age is it really only tested you on a. I hated this phrase in high school, but I I, I agree with it now. That there's only one type of smart is what it Brain Age was, t you know, testing on. It's like it was a linear scale of like how smart are you? I'm smarter than but, a fifth grader. Right, but it's like, here's math, here's, you know, can you detect what word it is? I can't even remember all the, um, there was one where it's like, uh, it would give you a circle of letters and you had to figure out what word it was, which by the way, is a great way to solve anagrams, is writing them in a circle, uh, the, all the letters in a circle. So it, it was okay, but it was flawed in that manner. Big Brain Academy always did had had that math aspect to it, but tested you on other things too, like how good are you at spatial awareness and how good are you at identifying things quickly? And it really kind of tried to figure out like, hey, this is... If one was just the schooling system, that would be brain age. While I feel like Big Brain Academy was trying to be a guidance counselor. Hey, maybe okay. you should look into... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, look into other options for you because like some would like memory and stuff and again it, it very it felt very much like oh you were dumb in uh, brain age well big brain academy is like no you did okay here you have room for improvement but you did okay here and you did really good on this aspect because it has this like um it's not a pentagram god damn it um not really? Right. What's the uh, five-sided yeah. shape? No, no. What's the what's a five-sided uh, polygon or um, pentagon? Pentagon. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> it was like it's not a pentagram. I was like, I was like what are we pentagon. talking about here? Yeah. So it's a, a pentagon that tells you like, oh, that you're uh, really smart in this category. So it has that sort of like stat graph where it kind of pulls towards the corners of the. Uh, Pent pentagon so <laughs> i was like interested but i never played the wii version because why would i play that on the wii but i had it on the ds so i started up big brain academy brain versus brain on the switch and uh holy shit i love it oh there you um go. yeah i i was i wasn't sure because i was like ah, it's been a while since i've done these and like this is this is gonna suck, you know. Like they're trying to bring back this series, they haven't done it 
you know, in in years. So like, what what are they? What are we doing here? Um, but lo and behold, it's got four activities for each category. Um, I'm gonna start up my pull my switch out of the dock so I can actually tell you what it is. Um, whip it out, man. Yeah. So um, identify is like one um category that's uh like how quick can you figure out something and so i apologize this is really rough um podcasting here i i i thought i'd remember it better but apparently that skill is bad for me um do you have like a -a whack-a-mole where it's like they give you objects that you have to identify quickly the moles pop up and then go back down um and they'll give you multiple items so Two moles might pop up, and only one of them has the item you're looking for, uh, or one of the items you're looking for. Uh, Species spotlight, where you move around a spotlight and you have to quickly identify which one of the animals is like what animal is the most on screen. Now, it might might be three animals when you move the spotlight, but it only give you two options. Um, I'm pretty good at that one. Uh, Frame filler. it's a moving picture and you have to figure out what of the three panels actually is that spot. It's hard to explain, um, but it's extremely difficult further on because it's all these overlapping shapes. Um, so figuring out which one is which is pretty hard. And then there's fast focus, which is they bring a picture into view. Sometimes it's whited out and they're bringing in by, by pixel by pixel almost. Other times it's super zoomed in and they zoom out slowly and it's how quick you can pick up what it is. Uh, There's Memorize, where they give you a... uh, where it's a bunch of activities based on memory. Uh, Most of them are kind of the same. They give you an object or pattern, you memorize it, and then you, you know, just repeat it. However, there's the um, shell game. There's a shell game, I swear to God, it's... It's uh, it just straight up, you know, there's a bird in a bird cage. They cover all the bird cages. They swap them around. You have to figure out where it is. Um, it's easy at first. And then they they have like three bird cages that have a bird in it and then four that don't. And they start swapping them around. And you're like, oh, God. And they change the shape of the pattern of where stuff is. And then there's reverse retention, which is they give you a pattern and you have to repeat it back to them in reverse order. And it's not just numbers, it's sometimes musical instruments. <laughs> I just um, had, I just had a flashback to the the man woman TV. <laughs> man woman TV. The 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 remember the what was that test that our former president had to take it was a man woman camera TV. You remember that? Oh, oh yeah, that's um <laughs> that you that's um oh my god, that's a neurological exam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I just say that that is extremely difficult anyways, because they'll also give you so they'll give you three objects in the room to identify, and then they'll give you three words to remember. They'll do a bunch of tests in between, and then they'll ask you to recall that information. I can if it's not like I'm sure I could do it in the moment, but like when I think about it now, when it's I'm not under, you know, the testing conditions, I go the fuck that noise. <laughs> Um, there's, uh, analyze, which is more of like, um, quick thinking. So there's one where it's a set of three, like cubes and you have to count how many cubes. And of course some are hidden. Uh, everybody thinks seen that sort of basic before it might have actually been in one of the previous big brain academies. Uh, there's the scales, which one's the heaviest. Uh, there's one where it gives you a bunch of blocks and you have to match an image by deleting certain blocks and all the blocks are different shapes. So you have to match an image on the top to the bottom. Uh, and then there's speed sorting, which they'll give you, like, uh, which one is an insect? And the four pictures pop up. And sometimes it's one item, sometimes it's multiple. One I did, it said, uh, pick from smallest to largest. So all the pictures, I had to choose what was the smallest to largest. The only problem I have with this game is it it expects you to have some sort of, like, knowledge outside of I'd argue that with the um, one where like it also has you identify from a picture 
that uh, is like either zoomed in or hidden partially, it expects you to be able to identify uh, things that some people may not be able to. Um, for the most part, that's not an issue, but it's like, I don't know, there, there's just certain bugs that they have pictures of where I'm like, I know what that is, but does everybody know what that is on a worldwide scale? I don't know. Um, compute where is where I fucking just shit the bed entirely because it's math. And I can't do math in my head very well. Um, one of them, ad agency, is like they give you like a certain amount of items and you have to choose like from like panels down below of different items and you have to e- <clears throat> have the sums equal. Uh, mallet math can go fuck itself. Mallet math has a stack of numbers and you have to make it so it adds up to the number on the right hand side of the screen. And I can't think quickly enough. And I can't think like with all the numbers vertically doing the math that way. It's stressful. I hate it. And I'll explain that why I hate it further on. Um, TikTok turn. Wow. The, to talk about stuff that kids nowadays won't de- be able to deal with. It's turning the like hands on a clock to match time and stuff. You know, all those analog clocks that kids use nowadays. They still have those uh, in schools, right? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I thought they I'd did. Assume uh, so, so the last time but... I was in a classroom, I thought I remember seeing one. Because like, when I was in school, it was always above the door. Yeah. Yeah, me me too. Um, but, like, I honestly don't know. Because uh, why would I be inside of school, Ken? Well, I would hope you wouldn't be inside of school. But yeah. I, I had to go because, you know, my son was in school. Yeah. yeah. At least before homeschooling. And then uh, Balloon Burst, which is like, I, you have to pop the smallest to largest numbers. But uh, this is kind of like their version of the Stroop test, because the largest balloon might be the smallest number. So your brain wants to pop the smallest balloon to the largest balloon. Uh, this is actually one. So a lot of the games you can play using the touchscreen or the controls. This is one where playing with the controls is actually very difficult. I've actually screwed up. Because moving the cursor around to the balloons is a pain in the ass with the control stick. Um, and using, like, fingers is much easier. And then the last category is visualize, which is, um, like, using tangrams to make shapes. Um, shadow shift, which is just matching the items to the shadows that you see, and they start overlapping them the further you get in. Uh, train turn, which is just putting down the right track for the train. It's difficult because they start spinning it and some people won't have the directional uh, aspect down. And then True View, which is they point at like a 3D object and they ask you, what would it look like from the angle that the arrow is pointing? And what I like about all these is because I'm not good at the math portion of this. So obviously that's where I have to improve. But some people aren't going to have the visual, like the directional aspect of things, which is the visualized component. Um, So to me, it's like there isn't just a linear path to learning. It's like, oh, no, you're really good here. And that's what what it was interesting was when I did really bad on math in my first testing. um, It kind of told me like, hey, you did really good in these portions and not so great here. So like it this is where you need to work on, but you'll get better if you go and practice. So I, I think it like, unlike brain age where they just give you an age for your brain and like, fuck you. Um, kind of like how we fit was like, ah, you're fat and lazy, you piece of shit. Um, oh my God. If a Nintendo game actually said that I would buy it, but like it kind of did, it would go like, if you stepped onto the balance board, it would go, ouch. <laughs> Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? And then it would, like, make your me f- super fat, if, like, <laughs> and stuff. Like, it was, th- that game was cruel. Oh, um, shit, that's hilarious. I never play. I never had a Wii board. So. Oh, man, that game was, that game was mean, and Brain Age could be mean, too. And Big Brain Academy, maybe it was mean on the DS, but, like, right now it's uh, very, very more kind. Um, I think it's a little bit more adult-oriented still. Um, but, uh, it definitely has a kitty appearance. It actually reminds me of Animal Crossing, even the way that the doctor talks or the professor or whatever his character's name is. And you have a little character. It's not a me, um, that you make and, uh, you unlock as you, as you gain like coins every time you get like 10 coins, it unlocks another 
piece of out, like an outfit that you can put on to customize your character. When you get all gold medals in practice, it opens up super practice, which means that you start off higher up up in the so every mini game like as you finish more and more correctly, it goes into harder and harder difficulties. Super practice just starts you in those harder difficulties right away. Um, then you have your test, which I can give you my, um, so, oh God. So here's where my score was. Um, my total score was 270, uh, 2,765, which is an A plus plus rating. However, my brain type is compute deficient. (laughs) And if you go around my little, uh, Pentagon visualize, I have 518 identify. I have 680. Memorize, I have 798. These are all the scores that I got. Analyze, 690. And then co- Compute, I have 79. <laughs> like, that whole area of the Pentagon is just white. <laughs> so, um, you do a test, you know, every once in a while. But I have been addicted to Ghost Clash, which is their version of online. Which is where it's really bad when I get, like, the... um stupid addition tower thing fucking hate that because i immediately know i'm gonna have a bad time unless the other person's ghost is really bad um so what it does is instead of having multiplayer be live it takes all these other people that have played and puts their ghosts online so you compete against the ghost So it shows you how quickly they're doing it in real time but it's not playing them in real time so they give us the same puzzle, and if I complete it first, I get 20 points. And the idea is that you need to get 100 points to beat your opponent. If I don't, the amount of time it took me, it like gives me... Usually it's a plus 8, but on some, it'll be like, oh, you took too long, here's a plus 1. So it only puts me up at 1 point. And so uh, this is how you get your world ranking. I'm currently at 3,450 which is way better than that 10,000 something or other I started at. Um, But it's just, I'm addicted to it because it gives you a random game. It puts you up against these other people. And like, it's just really fascinating to me. Like it challenges me to be better and quicker on these challenges than the main game itself does. I just can't believe how much there is in this game so far. Um, I don't know if they'll add to it because it's a weird with Nintendo, they seem to add to some stuff and not to others. But um, this is way more than I thought it was going to be. And I think they've gamified sort of expanding your brain um, way better with this than they ever did with Brain Age. And that's it for me. That's uh, Big Brain Academy, Brain versus Brain. Brain, Brain, Brain. Well, while you were talking, Drew joined us. Yes, I am here. And all he said so far is Pentagon. Yeah. Do you have any video um, games you'd like to talk about, Drew? I have a few. Let's do this. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about it deeply. I just do want to say that I have started again and am playing farther now into Death Stranding. Yeah, you have. I'm gonna say it on the on the Phoenix Down, but I'm also gonna say it here. Hideo Kojima has always done this. He has he has always introduced a whole bunch of weird stuff that makes zero sense, and every character in this world acts like it's every day. <laughs> I, this is the few times though where I go, oh, he explains everything at some point. Okay, because it's, my. It's, so many things within the first two hours of that game, like I'm just like I, I, it just none of this makes sense at all. Like, uh, you know, I never understood how everybody knows a fox die. Like everybody knew that, you know, in in Metal Gear Solid. So it's like, why the fuck would everybody know about your secret kill switch thing? Like, you know, so I. I don't know. I I I love Death Stranding. Everything is explained. Isn't there isn't there one thing towards the beginning with the guy that you ride through the storm with? Isn't there something that he gives you that doesn't come back around or am I misremembering? 
Um, you're talking about the guy who, I mean, Drew's, Drew's already been there and I don't think it's spoilers cause it's like, it's in the intro. It's, it's like the intro mission. You're talking about the one where they have the dead body in the back of the van. Yes. Yeah. And they drive through the storm. Yep. Um, the only thing he gives you is BB, I think. I thought there was something like the necklace or something. I don't remember. It's been so long since I've done that. Intro. The necklace is never really explained. I yeah, guess, but and that's like... the that's the only thing that like stuck. And when that's the only thing that sticks out in a Kojima game explaining things, I'm okay with that. But it's but it, the, the necklace is not explained because if you look at the necklace, it has a bunch of other things on it. But that's the thing that allows you to connect. Yeah, you connect. It's called the 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 Cupid. Yeah, it's it's the the thing that allows you. It's just a code. It's just a it's just a code yeah. that allows you to connect <clears throat> things. It's just if you look at the actual three D model, it's got a bunch of like physics equations so, and stuff. My my thing is, and this is this is the thing that I'm, I can just chalk it up as it's a video game. But Sam is traveling mainly by foot. Across country, correct? Yeah, that's the okay. That's the story. What what it looks like? So I've made it to the first big. I wouldn't say first big. The first checkpoint where I use the Cupid to connect. The first knot, as they call it, mm-hmm. and it looks like I traveled from what looks like Virginia to Ohio. Yeah, it's now it's... that took me. That took me ten minutes in game to do on yeah, foot. Yeah, it's not. This is not. This is not a realistic. <laughs> this is not to scale. <laughs> I, I understand it's not to scale, but the fact that they mentioned that his, what I'm guessing is his sister, went across the country to California, and it took her three years to do it. I mean, you got to show some kind of passage of time. Uh, here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Time. You have to also remember. Time sort of has fallen apart. Okay. The time. Fall, I mean, maybe. literally, time fall is is a thing. I know, I know, uh, and I'm sure that's that plays a part in it. But I'm just like, you know, I, I walked from Virginia to Ohio in ten minutes. I mean, sure, we can say that's a video game, but then when you say that it took Amelie, Emil, whatever her name is, Amelia, three years to go across the country. Well, it may have taken you longer, you just don't know. Gotcha. I also want to say that I... Like, if you look at the map, I don't know if it's actually just part of the United States that's been cut off to look like the United States, if that makes sense. Maybe the time fall has shrunk the country. I mean that literally. Like, it's yeah, that could... Of all the events that are happening, like, I, it was just something I didn't question because... None of those places are actually called real things anymore, anyways. Yeah, everything's not city. Yeah, so it's like, I, to me, it was like, it looks like the United States. It's clearly supposed to be the United States, but it's whatever's left of the United States. Did they ever say what year this actually takes place? I don't remember. It exactly. might be in one of the emails you get once you get yeah. to the main hub. Okay. I know they 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 reference the past. I, I, they might towards the end of the game actually too, because it right. does start covering past events. Oh I yeah, this a no, this lot. is a post-apocalyptic game. Well, but... just keep going. <laughs> I think that's a. I think that's a. You oh, could God. say that, but Don't like this game ends with like, oh, this is the beginning of time. Uh, just keep uh, you. We'll talk about this later. I don't want to say uh, anything. Okay. Uh, 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 no, because Drew's, Drew's now very upset. I can tell you right now that's not the case. Okay. Yeah, but there, that's there what, are... That's what happened when I put a lot of time into a TV show for. That happened at the very end of it, and I was like, why did I yeah, know no, this no, was no, going to no, happen? This, I, is, this, is, this is not that. You Let's put it this way. I am someone who does the exact same thing as you just did, Drew, with everything. Oh, I know how this is going to end. And unfortunately, you, you don't know. You don't know a lot of the game. time I'm right. This is a game where I just was like, at some point I just went, all right, fuck it. I, I, I have, and I was right on a couple things and totally not right on others. And some of those things were very intertwined. So I guess I just wasn't right in general. Like I had some right idea through like things that he clearly hints to. But it's like, if you don't 
read into them the way I read into them, you're not going to realize that. But the fact is, is that he also doesn't leave you behind. He makes it very clear when, like, he wants to explain it, what he's explaining. So I, I just, I don't know. One of my biggest questions is, and this is a dumb question, I know why he's named Die Hard Man. Why is he wearing that fucking mask? They'll explain that. Okay. They literally well, they, explain is, almost everything that you're going to have a question is, about. There's okay. only one moment that isn't explained, and I just went, and it has to do with that fucking mask. And oh, it didn't make sense mask? in a cutscene. Sorry? Yeah, that, the Die Hard okay. Man mask. And they do went, explain why he wears it, so don't worry about that. I went, why does that character why is that character holding it currently? That's yeah, that 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 didn't make a lot of sense, but the mask is in explained. the grand scheme yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I'm like, I guess that makes sense. It, it was kind of just a pointless thing, but like why does everybody do everything? It was like an unnecessary thing for me to be like, eh, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. I mean I, I'm I still get Okay. I know it's a dumb name. I know it's a dumb name, but it makes sense because I know why he is called Die Hard Man. <laughs> and they literally explain all the stupid names, and I'm still impressed. Well, I mean, that his they... fucking yeah, man that that character I did not like. I know you're not supposed to, but <laughs> I'm still and impressed whoever... that they explain the the World War Two shit. I'm just impressed they fucking explained anything. They explain everything. Well, go, they, that's super go and watch. I don't even know what you're talking about. World War Two shit. It There's was in the World trailers. You there, saw the trailers. The trailers. They they showed like uh you know Mickelson running around in World War Two and all that stuff. They explain that, that shit. The, the, I, the, I don't remember any of this. Oh yeah. Okay. I can tell you the the trailer is Guillermo del Toro's character has the baby in his arms and he's yep. going into the sewer. But over top of the sewer, you see, like, World War II tanks that are covered in, like, the goo. Yep. And, like, planes flying overhead. And you're like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm going to say this right now. Before you finish this game, I don't know if the second trailer is necessary because it's in the game directly. But go and watch the... I, I'm fucking... I'm just going to say it blank soon. Go and watch the original two reveal trailers. That's the one where Sam is on the beach. Yep, I've seen that one. Yep, not you need to go watch the trailer again. Because what you see in the game is not identical. I'm not going to point out why. But you're going to pick up on something later in the game. You're going to go, oh, he fuck, that's good. And the other one is just like watch that trailer because I don't think that one plays out the same way either, but it's very minimal changes. But it, like, so, it did build is, up. There was payoff for both those trailers. There, There is one thing I, I will ask, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but I will ask it because I feel like I have caught on to it. Does astronomical signs have something to do with this game? Okay. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Okay. You're talking about that question at the beginning of the game? Not just the question, but the things you see. He does a lot of emphasis on animals that are related to astronomical signs. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Okay. I don't, so, so the problem with this is, I think the problem is that people haven't tested that enough to exactly know. I do know that there's a slight change based on, like, your astronomical sign, but it's, like, a minimal Easter egg. It's it's so kind of like the that... when you put your birthday in Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah. yeah. It's minimal, um, but it's there. I mean, maybe. You're talking about the um, the BTs, right? I just meant, like, the, the, the like on the beach, he shows a crab, he shows the fish, he show, and, and it's like all this stuff is like... Oh, I'm going to tell you right now, you see that anyways. I know, but I'm just saying, why use those animals? Like, um, like they're ast astronomical stuff. You, you know, like, also yes, but I'm also going to say you like see whales. So isn't that, isn't a whale one of them too? No. Nope. Okay. You were thinking Pisces, Cancer, but whales aren't a astronomical sign. Okay. I don't know. Astrological yeah. sign. Astrological, astronomical, whatever. It's an astronomical, astrological sign. Oh, yeah. No, astrology and astronomy are very two different things, very much so. But, I, I I don't know. I, I, I 
so far I'm not minding the game. I'm about three and a half hours in. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm moving on to the next knot. So I, I went to the first knot and used the, the Cupid there. And I was like, okay, here's two more you need to go. And then there's one. So you're going to get these two to go to Central Knot City, which is like the next big city. And I'm like, okay. So I, I, I at least have a... The game at least gives you a plan. You're moving from here to here. Um, what chapter are you in? Two. When you get to... Anthony, what was it? Seven? I think seven is like the the breakout point of like, okay, there's more to this than I thought there was. Well, the, when you meet... Oh my god. Ma? Is that her name? Mama? Mama. Mama. I'm poor already. Yeah, that's when you start going, what the fuck? Well, I, I think mean, he's that... referring to a later... In... You oh, might no, have... that's when, that's when the, the, what I'm saying is, is like, that's when stuff starts to be like, that's when I feel like it starts to go, okay, we've set up enough. We're slowly going to explain to you. But it's like, yeah, chapter six or seven when it starts going like, guess what, Bucko, you're on the fucking ride. <laughs> the first time you run, the first time you have a fight with um, Troy Baker's character. So you do have, there are straight up boss fights in this oh, game. Oh, 100%. There's... 100%. What, two? Well, there's two with him, but then there's also no, the monster. There's, t- there's two there's... with him. No, there's three with him. There's the first one. Like, that's the chapter I'm talking about, chapter seven. And then there's the big one. The big one in the... Yeah, the big one is where I had the issue where the... Yeah, because the big one is where I died. The only time I died. Yeah, that, okay. that fight there's... is hard. <laughs> yeah, and then there's the final, like, the revolver thing ocelot fight. thing, yeah. Oh no, no, okay, yeah, that's right. You're right. Yeah, there's three battles with him. Yeah, right. the revolver ocelot then there's, thing. Then is... there's, but then there's that last fight against not Troy Baker. Yes. Right as we're ending the game. Yes. So, but there's also like big creature battles too. But the big creature battles. <laughs> Let me ask the this. I, I, I don't I have not ran into anybody out on the field. I know that you do. Yes. If, what do you mean? If you if you kill guys It's a bad time if you leave them there. So what am I supposed to do? Take Knock them and them burn them. Unlethal. Yeah, don't don't kill them. If you do kill them, take them and burn them. Where um, though? To the incinerator. <laughs> the place where you took You've the body there. at the beginning the, of the at game. At the very beginning of the game? Yes. You're goddamn right. If you don't... halfway across the country. If you don't, bad things will you. Don't happen. kill the guys. Use... So, so there's non-lethal options. You'll get better non-lethal options as you go further in the game. Okay. But the... What is it? The... What is that fucking the bolo, bolo tie? The bolo like, tie? Yeah. That thing is... That thing is yeah. great for taking over camps. Yeah, that one's great. Um, but yeah, eventually you get like rubber round like pistols and stuff. Yeah, if you gotcha. kill if you kill somebody, I suggest you burn them or don't come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to experiment with the first the first body. Uh, it'll definitely do its thing. I wanted to just lay it there and see what happens. Uh, it'll happen. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, man, I can't I'm... just I can't I can't speak highly enough about this game and you know I fucking didn't like Kojima's nonsense and it's just like fuck Death Stranding is still so good. Yeah. What's what what kills me is like that game will get nearly the credit that Metal Gear does. And it, I, honestly, I think it's I think it's like the step that Metal Gear had to go forward now i understand the walking part and the stacking equipment shit probably bothers people i love that portion of it but like man when it starts going into like full metal gear solid 5 with invisible things like that is the shit the game goes a place and then it goes another place then it goes forty more places i love the stealth element and in this game like the fact that it's these unseen creatures and you're holding your breath and trying to be quiet and 
Did Fuck, you get the I knife see. yet, Drew? I haven't got any weapon yet. Okay, once you get the knife, the stealth portions can become easier. Oh, show. Okay. I ran into BTs once. Uh, that wasn't scripted. Yeah, you'll run into plenty more. That game does an excellent job of telling, like, telegraphing when you're going to run into BTs and you can actually avoid them if you want, but it's a longer walk. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I, I feel like the monotony is going to settle in on that game for me. Hundred percent, it will. And once you start getting like the leg upgrades and the and the, the strength upgrades and stuff like that, you'll get in a groove, man. It's crazy. So, I'm just do, do you use your likes to buy stuff? Is that what it is? No, you have you. So part of the stuff that you should be transporting are resources. I think there's like five or six different resources, and you use those. You'll too. find them, find them on the map. Fucking stack them on. Yep. So what do I do with them? Because I found some resin. Drop them off. You yeah, drop them drop off them at off. the. Once you get to the big city, you'll get like this this place where you can sleep and store your shit and just put it all there. in my private stash. I put the resin in my private stash. I was like, I don't know what to do with it. it. Says you can break it down to use materials, and I was like, okay, well, I don't know how to break stuff well, down. Maybe you I got there yet? When you when you deposit it. With your so, when you do your little drop off and asks you to like, what are you dropping off? Like, don't. So the problem with that game, the only thing that's like kind of a problem is you have to get like one hundred percent connection rate to be able to share resources between two different points. So wherever you drop the resources, is wherever those resources are. Uh, so always drop like until you've gotten better connection rates if that's even a thing you want to do only drop off materials at like places where you know you're going to use as like a central hub to go do deliveries crap that makes sense right i'll I'll let that at the first checkpoint you have to go regardless so what 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 you want to do is you just drop them off and it deposits them as like a certain resource because I think you have like what three or four different resources, yeah. And then it, yeah, just it autom- it should automatically deposit them into that because it's not for the delivery is not for anyone, so they just put it into that stack. Okay. All right. So I, what I need to do is go back to the checkpoint, pull it out of my private stash, and then deliver it. Just to, yeah, just deposit okay. it. Yeah. All right. Got it. If I recall correctly, but that's yeah, how because yeah, it doesn't go to anybody. Okay. So just just go to the resource stash at that, and most of those places already have a basic resource stash, so you're just adding to them. But you could totally abuse that by making too much crap, and then run out of resources. Okay. And the stuff you build on the field uses the resources. Yeah, they made me build a uh, drop box or whatever. Yeah, the useless drop box. Yeah, I, I, I ran into a few of those, and I'm just like, these. no, I'm not going to entrust lost stuff to other players. No, I never picked anybody else's shit up, so nobody else is picking up mine. Yeah, well, my thing is I'm constantly being disconnected. Did you guys deal with that? Mm-mm. I get disconnected. Every time I boot up the game, it says, you've been disconnected. And I'm like, okay. So I go into the, after I start the game, I go into the menu and try to connect and it's blacked out. So I'm like, okay, am I connected again? That's weird. No, I didn't I have fe- much problem with this connection. I, I fear that I am playing this game not online and I'm not going to experience everything. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I I've mean, I'm going to be honest with you, outside of one road that a bunch of people had built for a very short distance... You don't need other people. Yeah, I played that game when it was, you know, like in reviewer time. So there wasn't a ton of people playing it. And I don't feel like I miss... Like, it's neat on occasion to bump into people's stuff, but I don't think you really need it. Yeah, like, here's 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 the... A good case scenario is like, oh, man, I need to go up there. So you do the climb the first time or whatever, you do it away, and then you're like, go back after you've connected the two knots, and you're like, oh, somebody was smart enough to put a ladder here so I can just use the ladder. Yeah. That's it. I think it'd be funny. But you could have put the ladder. So, Rivers. Honestly, Rivers is kind of where that 
came into play where I'm like, oh, somebody put a river here or put a bri- like a bridge or a ladder over this river so I can just cross easily. Yeah. But other times it would be like, why the fuck would you build this here? What fucking point is this? This piece of shit. Like, I almost wanted to be like, dismantle this. This is terrible. Get this out of my sight. Like, so they'd be like, what what do one of those. Do? Likes are just, they're just arbitrary. Okay. It's kind of stupid every now and then you'll, there'll be cutscenes where you get like a million likes and you'll be like, well, uh, okay. No, there's okay. one cutscene where it plays pretty funny. It's funny, but they're arbitrary. You don't need them. Yes, you're right. Okay. I, well, they just play them, like, every time you make a delivery, it, sh- it shows how many likes you got. Ding, ding, ding. And I was like, okay, so is this my currency? No. Because it, 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 they play it like a big deal. It's just his, make a I think it's I think it's a joke. Yeah, it's just him being like these are it, I I literally think you Anthony's right it's a joke. He's like you're getting likes but they're useless just like in real life. Gotcha. <clears throat> gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm continuing to play. I have no idea where like to stop for the first recording for this game. How many <laughs> chapters are there? 15? Right? 16? But here's the thing. You you've been through 3 and you're like, "Oh, well, I'm one, you know, one person. Nah, dog. Some of those chapters are long. So you are in chapter. <clears throat> there's 14 chapters. Okay. A meal. So, a meal so you are where you said your chapter three. Two is, is chapter a meal. Um, or the sister's Amelie. name. Amelie, Amelie. Excuse me. Um. Yeah, that one's longer. Um. So here's the thing. Like chapter. So I'm looking at the chapter list right now, and it's like, yeah, that one's a longer one. I believe chapter three is a longer one. And then I want to say, like, yeah, chapter four is short. Chapter five is longer. Chapter six is a little bit longer. Um, Chapter seven, short. Chapter eight. Chapter eight is probably the longest fucking chapter. <laughs> you know which one that is, then, Ken. I do. Can you tell me the environment, Ken? Is that that's um? God damn it! It's right when you get it. Like it's brown, big open area. No, I thought seven was the the fight. Seven's then... the fight, and then eight is in the mountains. Oh God, eight is the mount. Holy <laughs> eight is the eight is. So 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 I'm gonna prepare everybody. Eight, chapter eight has like a cutscene that is thirty minutes. Yeah, for when you're in the building with the uh, the dude. Yeah, that is a long ass cutscene. But like just um, walking through the mountains, but, holy yeah. god! But then after that, like I want to say, like every chapter is maybe an hour, except some of those are not. Like chapter fourteen is not an hour. Chapter yeah. fourteen is. That game, after the mountain, like, the mountain area is the longest, sloggiest part of that game, and then it just kicks into overdrive. That's where you should definitely invest. As soon as you can, I've told Drew this, but I'm going to tell everybody this, as soon as you can, invest into the cybernetic, like, legs. Yeah, the legs are the best. And okay. and you're going to be like, I want to sprint. Don't. It allows you to carry more. Yep. But if you sprint, you slow down immensely, so you just take it easy. Okay. That game is good. All right. Yeah, fuck man, I still love that game. I, I I should be playing it right now, but I just don't have the time. Yeah, I really wanted to play more of the director's cut, but I just I'm just like, man, I don't have another forty five, fifty hours for this. Oh, if I had the director's cut, I would totally, totally fucking uh, be playing it right now. All right, Drew. What else you got? We're already an hour in. We've only talked about two games. I know, I know. Um, I uh, am playing for a review. Can I talk about this game? Yeah, it's already out. Um, uh, Grim Dawn. Yeah, there's controversy about that game floating around in there. A little bit. Um, so Grim Dawn uh, is a 2016 uh, action role-playing game a la Diablo. Um, it was on PC originally, um, and it is a fantastic game. It is a really, really good Diablo type game, um, and uh, it became really popular. And they released two DLCs for it. Now, 
this is the definitive edition that I'm playing. It comes with both DLCs, um, new character classes. First time it's on a console, I think, is the big deal about this. Yes. So this is the first time it's on a console. It's on Xbox and PlayStation. Is it on Switch as well? I don't think so. Okay. So uh, this game is on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. It can be played on the series versions and you... the PlayStation 5. No, it's it's only available on Xbox. Oh, is it? I was just yeah, looking Xbox it up. Xbox One, yeah. Microsoft Windows. Yeah, it's only really? on Xbox. Okay, never mind then. Sorry, PlayStation fans. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> that, is, that is really weird. So, um, yeah. Uh, man, this plays... Almost identical to Diablo 2 Resurrected, where you can use the thumbstick to move basically a mouse cursor around, or you can use the D-pad and it automatically kind of like clicks over to the next option kind of thing. Mm. Um, but it plays good. Like, it, it plays like Diablo. It, 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 they, they did a pretty good job with getting it, you know, working with a controller. Um... Uh, I think the controversy comes into play when you're trying to play on the the newer consoles, the S and the X. Um, uh, the resolution and the frame rate are that uh, they're not locked. I think the developers have came out and said they're not locked. It's that we don't have a dev kit for the series versions of these consoles, so we don't necessarily know how to optimize it. But then there's people out there saying, well, you've optimized it for PC. Why can't you figure out this? Um, it plays fine. It's, it's 30 frames per second. I've never seen it, it dip once. I've put probably two and a half hours into it. Yeah, it's it's weird that they don't have a kit. It's like Microsoft apparently makes that super easy for... Like and this game is an ID at Xbox game, so like they, if they're in that program, they should have gotten a kit. Yeah, no, they don't. Have, they said they don't have one. That's weird. So it it is playing in 1080p, uh, at 30 frames a second. It's not that big of a deal to me, if you ask me. But um, there's a lot of game in there. Uh, if you like Diablo, you're gonna like this. There's some really cool aspects to Grim Dawn. So you choose a, a specialization, whether it be like an occultist or a warrior, or I think they're called soldier in this game. So you have like a class, and eventually you get to go to another class. But with, instead of instead of uh, of specking as you get picking and choosing, you get to choose two classes, and what happens is it combines together and creates a a new class. That is like named and everything. So they have combinations for each one. So if you do you know, soldier and occultist, it becomes something else. It's kind of like Dragon's uh, Dogma. Yeah, and um, and then you get kind of like the best of both worlds. So you can, you know, if you're if you're really into magic abilities, you can then go to like melee, and you now have magic melee. It's it's really cool how they handle that stuff. There's tons of customization options, tons of items to get, all different types of rarities. And, like, they really do a good job of, like, um, you know, like you can specify what loot they show you. So if you have, like, bland crap that you're never going to use show up, you can just tell the game, don't show me that stuff anymore. Just show me rare or better, you know, that kind of thing. Does it have lightning? You can even say, if it doesn't, ha- if it has fire damage, I don't want to see it. I want to see lightning damage. That's it. So, I mean, you can customize the game in that way. Um... My biggest concern, and, and I think this is the resolution issue, um, and they they have the, so they had they they went on the subreddit for Grim Dawn and and kind of had like an open forum, uh, and they mentioned that they were going to work on this. The text on the TV, I have to get up and like get close to my TV to read it, <laughs> um, and they said that they were going to address that issue. Uh, it, cause it's small. It's, it's like, you remember how the text looked on, uh, Dead Rising back in the day? Yeah, on an HD TV only. Oh. On the regular TV, it was fine. Yeah. But that was but excusable back then because a lot of people didn't have HD TVs. Yeah. 
And then this one, it's just like, man, I gotta like, I have to lean forward to actually be able to read it. So that that it that is the biggest issue I've had with it so far. Um, there are a few other issues there. So like, um, and I had it happen to me. I don't. I so didn't I hear s- what you said. I haven't said it yet. <laughs> oh, I thought you said it like got cut out or something. No, no, I said it. It has happened to me. Uh, and I saw it on the subreddit that they were talking about. Uh, is the if you accept a quest in town, um, and you get like halfway through it, everything that you get, your items, your your levels, experience points, um, even the waypoints. So if you if you continue through the story and find a waypoint. All that stuff stays unlocked, but any progress you made toward your quest, if you quit the game and come back, you're back to starting at the beginning of that quest. And uh, they said that they're going to work on that as well, and I did have that, because I started the first quest where I had to go kill a boss. I got like halfway through it, and I had to go talk to the guy who gave me the quest again to get the quest again. And I was like, really? It's not even going to stay in my, my log. And so they said they're working on that, but regardless of, of the small issues that I've had with that game, that game's fantastic. Grim Dawn is a great, great Diablo game. I shouldn't even say it's like a Diablo clone. I hate saying Diablo clone, but that's the best way to describe it. Cause when you say Diablo, everybody knows what you're talking about. Um, but there's tons of customization options in there. It, it is Grim Dawn is a fantastic game, and if you like that kind of game, you're gonna love this game. And um, I highly suggest it to everybody out there if they're into that kind of thing. Um, and hopefully, the devs will. They, they seem to be actively trying to to get as many issues out of the way, and they seem to be like really devoted to getting this version working properly. And it's working fine. It's just there's some issues. Such a weird so, thing, like a, a five-year-old game just now coming to console, and only to one. And yet yeah, they don't I, have a dev kit for the new console. That's weird. Yeah, and they're, and they're like, well, you can turn a Series X into a, a dev kit, and they're like, yeah. yeah you can't even buy one, now. <laughs> you can't find one. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm playing Grim Dawn for review. It's it's a great one. I've played it before on PC. It's it plays good on the on the controller. Um, so yeah, that uh, that I'm doing that. Um, still working on Death Door. I need to put more time into that. I know I've been slacking on it um, with the giant uh, the giant enemy standing in front of me, uh, which is Death Stranding. I'm like, should I? Put more time into Death Stranding. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm working on that. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, not really. All right. Yep, I guess about it. Cool. I don't have anything major to talk about. Wait, no, I do. Hold on. You're a liar. <laughs> Well, let me go through, <clears throat> since we've, we're deep into this already and i got a couple big things to talk about. I'm, I'm, I think I'm just going to skip the indie games this week. I played a few of them. Uh, stands. I mean, just give us the good ones. We could start doing that anyways. Aluna, yeah. Sentinel of the Shards, is a Diablo clone uh, with like a, uh, like Mexican folklore, um, okay. but also like ancient gods. So like, um, like the Greek gods, like Zeus. Yeah, uh, and apparently, like the character you play as a Luna, her mother was like a demigod. So, uh, but it's 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 a solid like you know top down action Diablo style game. It's got loot, colored loot. Um, it's good. It, it runs into the same issues as Grim Dawn. It only runs at thirty frames a second, but it plays fine. It's got weird enemies, like you're fighting monkeys in the first level. Which is weird. Uh, Anvil is really good, but it's in game preview. It's like a top-down uh, co-op, again, like action, like twin stick shooter, and it's it's really good. Uh, I just don't like playing things in game preview because then you know shit resets and it pisses me off. 
Uh, the only other game I'll mention is called Timothy vs. the Aliens. This this game is fucking weird. So, it's a black and white game. You're playing a gangster, like a, like a 1930s gangster. It's a third person open world game, but the characters look kind of chibi style. And the only thing that's in color are the aliens. You're just literally going around this big world, collecting money, doing quests, and shooting aliens. It's a weird game. But, there you go. Alright, um... I want to start by talking about Chorus. Chorus is a game that I've been playing for a couple weeks now. I didn't review it, but I, I played a bunch of it before release, and I kept telling people... Like, (laughs) behind the scenes of, like, this game is really fucking good. I can't believe more people aren't talking about this game. Um, So, Chorus is a space shooter. uh, Third-person perspective. You're flying around this kind of open-world area. There's connecting areas. You go through, like, these slip gates to get between the areas. What makes this game so good is a combination of the fact that it's... The story is really good. You play as this character named Nara who is what they call an elder in the game. She's like this killing machine. Uh, And she had this specific ship called Forsaken that they used to fly around, and they were just kind of like... like big badass murdering people. That's who the elders were. But she's kind of... She like put the ship in hiding. She went off and started being like a mercenary for these different colonies. But then where you pick up the game is where she, you know... You start off and you kind of get her character, but then she goes back to get Forsaken, who's been in, like, this cave hidden for, like, almost a decade. So then they get back together and they rekindle, like, like he's a fully sentient ship. Like, he talks and has conversations with her, and, like, they're connected. They're, they have, like, this psychic bond or whatever. And they get back together and then they start going after what they were going after initially. And it's just really well written. The character performances are really good. I'm really enjoying the story. But the thing that sells this game is like the way it plays. It's it's the dog fighting is so good. So you, I kind of compared it to like an open world Colony Wars. Like if Colony Wars was still being made, this game would kind of be its its natural evolution. And what I like about it is that it kind of tailors itself to your play style. So you get you start off with just like a Gatlin gun and normal ship controls. And then eventually you get two other weapons. You get a laser beam and and rockets. And each one is more effective against different types of enemies that show up. So, like, the rockets will take down a barrier while the laser will, uh, you know, break through their shields. Um, The ship itself, once you get Forsaken, also gets these abilities. So one of the abilities is kind of like this drift mechanic where you can kind of flip your ship around really fast um, in the middle of a dogfight, which is good for... You know, when ships fly past you front ways and you kind of flip around and get them. It's also got like this blink ability where you can, like it's on a cooldown, but you hit like the B button and you're, like if you're aimed at another enemy ship, you'll flip behind them like immediately. And then you can get like a couple hits in on them. And you'll get more of these abilities. What I like is that the weapons and the abilities, they upgrade based on how you use them. So, like, the Gatlin gun will upgrade after so many kills, whereas the blink ability, it'll upgrade when you kill them after blinking immediately so many times. It's kind of like a Morrow, or, I'm sorry, the the Skyrim, or, you know, as I like, you know, Wombat's not here to give a joke to, but Advent Rising, the more you do something, like, the more powerful it becomes. There's also, like, parts for your ship that you can buy. You can also dock at docking stations and buy new weapons. You do side quests and they'll give you um, like haul upgrades for your ship to make it stronger. And it's got almost like a little miniature loot system. Like you've got three spots on your ship you can put new stuff into and just kind of upgrade over time. But this game is just, I feel like nobody talked about it. Nobody's been having conversations about it and it came out of nowhere. And I, and I think it's just one of the best games that I've played this year. It's just, it's so good. And I'm having a really good time with it. I think I'm about 10 hours into it. I think I'm probably getting close to the end of it, but I've really enjoyed playing through it. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the Polymega. So Playmaji sent me a Polymega with the Super Nintendo... Um, I forget what they're called. Like the, the, the expansion unit that you can pop onto it. Uh, and so far I've been kind of running it through the ringer, doing different stuff. 
Uh, one thing I'll, st I'll kind of start with the packaging. Like, the boxes that they come in are really nice, like, thick cardboard. Like, they're really well put together. Um, and then you get into the system and you pull it out and it, it, it's kind of a mixed bag. Like, I know people use mixed bag a lot, but it truly is. Like, some parts of this machine feel really, really high quality, really nice. And then there are other parts of it that definitely feel kind of, like, skimped on. Um... The module thing is really easy, so when you get the box, it's just a normal, you know, console. But then you can press this little button on the side and pop off the thing and then pop on a new one for each of the... So they make one for Super Nintendo, which is Super Nintendo, Super Famicom. They make one for NES and Famicom. They make one for Turbo Graphics, and they make one for um, Sega, which includes Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, and 32X. So when you buy one of these expansion units, they literally come with a controller that is basically a, a a mirror of one of those controllers. So I got the Super Nintendo one. And when you plug the expansion unit on, it has a cartridge slot and two controller ports. And the cool thing is, is that the controller ports are actually the same as the original machines. So if you've got a Super Nintendo controller, you could just plug it right in. Um, the base unit itself is CD. So it works on uh, PlayStation, Sega Saturn, Sega CD, and Turbo CD. And basically what you can do is you can put a disc in and it'll you can install it to the hard drive or you can just play it. Now, the system ships with 32 gigs, but when you boot it up with the with the installed games and the OS, you're only left with 8 gigabytes. Which, if you're loading cartridge games, not a big deal. But if you want to load a bunch of CD games on there... That's going to take up some space. Luckily, the system does have two expansion slots. It's got a micro SD card in the back, and it's got an SSD port on the bottom of the system that you can take off and actually put like a um, like a PC SSD drive in there. So I opted to go and pick up. I picked up a 128 gig uh, micro SD card from Best Buy for like 15 bucks. Uh, plug that in, and immediately it just recognizes it. You format it, and you can start installing games to it, which is really nice. I, I'll, you know, I'll go into more detail in like my review, but one of the things I I did not like is that you cannot actually move things from like the SD card or the SSD. I'm assuming because I don't have one plugged in, but you can't move things between storages. So like if you have something on the internal, you can't move it to the external, which kind of sucks. Um, the controller that comes with the system is basically a dual shot controller. It's got the two analog sticks in the middle. It's got the four, um, shoulder buttons and a standard face buttons, but they actually mark them A, B, X, Y, um, which is more Xbox, but the sticks are, um, asymmetrical. So they're both at the bottom. It's not a bad controller. Um, but I do have a couple issues with it. The D pad is not great. I've had issues with the D pad so far. Uh, and, it, it uses a standard micro USB to charge, but there's no indication on the system like how charged it is. Now, I haven't burned it out yet, but then again, I've not played for more than an hour or two at a time. And then I always put my controller back on the charger. So I have no idea, like if you just jammed through it, like how much it would actually take to kill that controller. Um, installing games is fine. Takes about, I don't know, anywhere from five to 10 minutes to install a game. Uh, I did test PlayStation, Sega Saturn, Sega CD. I have a bunch of discs. I, I ran them all through. So a couple notes. <laughs> Drew, you'd be upset. Street Fighter, the movie, the game for the Sega Saturn. I can put it in. I can play it. But it won't install, which is weird. I don't, I don't know. It's probably just a bug. Um, Ridge Racer, the original for PlayStation, it'll install, but it won't play without the disc in. That's That's the other thing is like when you install a disc to this, you don't have to leave it in there. You can just play it. So you don't have to always put the disc in. So I was kind of just loading my entire collection into the Polymega. Uh, I did run across, across a couple times where discs wouldn't read, and that's mostly because of the discs are old. They got scratches, they're dirty, whatever. But then sometimes I would like put a disc in, and it's really scratched up, and it would still read. Whereas some of the ones that wouldn't read weren't really that scratched or dirty. So... That that totally depends on where the data is on the disc because some of those PS1 games are nothing on that disc. Like it doesn't even come close to the full capacity, while others do. And the first, so 
a disc that has low capacity, like you should be fine, even if it's super scratched around the outside, as long as the inside's okay. It also depends on how deep the scratch is. Yeah, this is very true. Um, so does it, does it do black discs all right? Yeah, that's what PlayStation was. PlayStation was all black. Of, am I thinking blue discs? Blue discs or PS2. Okay. Yeah, but PS1 were all black discs. Okay, yeah, that's right. You got to uh, remember this all, was... Not this... all. Um, if you go and buy... <clears throat> this is just a heads up warning. Go and buy one of the new Final Fantasy like greatest hits. Like, if you buy any of the Final Fantasy Greatest Hits, um, I believe Square has been printing those for a while now. That's the reason why they always have, like, new stock of it. Because they can still print them, but they're a silver disc. Huh. Interesting. I've never seen a silver PS1 disc, but then again, I haven't bought a PS1. I think those are, yeah, as I say, I think those are the only ones. So, yeah, this, I mean, I like, I, I I can tell you just by listening to it that the CD drive in this thing is not exactly top tier high quality CD drive which is weird because a CD drive can't be expensive right now right I'm wondering if it's just based on like getting a CD drive right because like I don't know if you can get a CD drive that isn't a DVD drive as well yeah I was gonna say because I bought to kind of piggyback onto this I bought a CD burner because I wanted to test if this thing would read burnt discs so I bought like just a USB external CD burner, and I got it for twenty five dollars at Best Buy. So it's not like it's overpriced, you know. Um, which is weird that they wouldn't just put that kind of hybrid drive in there anyway, because maybe they eventually down the line actually would allow you to do, you know, PlayStation Two or um, you know, some of the later DVD games. I don't know. The weird omission on this is that it doesn't do three DO. That's weird to me. I I understand that not a lot of people are going to be using that, but that just seems like a simple thing to get in there. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I I don't I don't do that kind of stuff, so I have no idea. But I mean, I'm I, I'm really impressed with the thing. I I think the interface has its moments. It has some good stuff in there. It definitely has some kind of questionable stuff in there. The the database seems huge. I was kind of searching through it to see you know. Is this game in here? Is that game in there? I had a I had three Japanese PlayStation games. They all three worked just fine. Uh, it was kind of weird booting up Enigma again. If you've never played that game, it was a Japanese only, like Resident Evil control style. But it was like a I don't know. It was more like an adventure game. It's made by Koei Tecmo. It's a weird fucking game. When Look, you said Enigma, I was thinking more of the uh, electronic band. Oh, no, yeah. That's Inya. No. No, 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 no. I'm that's Enigma Return to Innocence. It's Inya. I thought it was no. yeah. It's no. Inya. Bro, Enya's the woman. That fucking don't tell me my music. I know what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about Enigma. Okay. I think I know what you mean now. Oh, I guess he is right. I always thought it was Inya. No, no, no. And Enya's the woman that uh, Orinoco flow and uh, you can't say yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, That's to be honest it. with you, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> but no, if, if you want to know how weird, like Enigma's one of those games that I don't even know why I own it. Um, but if you want to know how weird this game is, go watch the intro on YouTube. And try to make heads or tails of it. Can I? You say that. You, I looked that up, and it reminds me of uh, the weird Japanese game I own for PlayStation, which is uh, Over Blood Two. Yeah, this is. I think this is weird weirder shit. than Over Blood Two. Enigma was a weird game, dude. That intro still boggles my. Uh, that's the other thing. Going back, and and I played quite a few of these games. Going back and playing PS1 games, man, the epic FMV intros in these fuckers. Toshinden 3 has one of the dumbest CGI intros ever created, and I absolutely love it. But no, I'm I'm really impressed with this machine. I've been taking notes. I'm going to write up a big thing about it. Um, How much are they asking for? It's expensive. It's $430. Jesus. For the base CD unit, uh, and then the expansion. So, like, each system expansion is 80 bucks. 
comes with the expansion and a controller. But I mean, if you've got a big... See, the thing is, is it's hard to recommend. It's like, if you have a large collection of PS1, Saturn, Sega CD, and you just want to store them and play them on your TV, this is a good buy. If you don't have a lot of those, there's no way to put anything else on it unless you have cartridges. You know what I mean? Hmm. And then you got to buy the expansion for the cartridge depending on which ones you need. And the cartridge dumping works exactly the same. You just plug the cartridge in and it gives you the option. Do you want to play it or do you want to install it? Do you want to add it to your collection? All of that stuff. It all works as intended. It all works as it should. And it plays good. And, I'm, you know, everything runs really well. It's got a lot of filter options. So you can, like, if you're one of those monsters that wants to stretch a 4x3 to a full screen, you can do that. You can add, like you know, the overlay filters that you see on all these old collections. It's it's a nice machine, but it is literally a niche machine. Like, there's no reason for you to buy it if you don't have a large collection of old CD or cartridge games that you want to back up and just play on your TV. I will say that it supports 120 hertz, which was unexpected, but I don't... I don't know of any PlayStation 1 or any of those games that run at 120 hertz. Oh, and to answer your question, you know, that we talked about when this first thing popped up, the Saturn emulation is great. Like, it runs like it, like I think it should. So. Do I have anything else to talk about? Is there another game coming out this week? Oh, yeah. Halo. We, 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 Jesus, Ken. What? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yes, I've been playing Halo. Um, I decided not to review it until the full game comes out because of the the, the kind of the way that the review process worked. They they gave me like a week with the build to to play through, and I was just like, you know what? I don't want to rush this. Especially after I started playing, I was like, I really don't want to rush through this. I want to spend my time and play. So I've been playing Halo Infinite's campaign. Um, the reviews are going to go live. You're going to hear this. You're already going to know the scores because I think the embargo's up at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, wow, 343 did it. They finally made Halo. <laughs> That's a good Halo game. They, this is a this like... This game is literally everybody, you know how we, you know, when we played Halo 4, we played Halo 5, we're like, these are, like, Halo 4 is like, this is a good game, but it just feels like old Halo. It doesn't feel right. And you play Halo 5 and you're like, wow, this is just getting worse. Halo Infinite literally tugs at every little thing that you love about Halo from, like, the the music keys or, like, the you know, the story that you want to hear, the characters you want to focus on, like it is nailing all of that. And then you combine that with the best gunplay that Halo has ever had. The, the gunplay in this game is so good. And you already know that because you're playing the multiplayer. But, like the weapons feel so good in this game. It takes you back to when Bungie really nailed what made Halo good. And then you tie it all up in a big, massive open world game that allows you to kind of tackle things in the order you want to tackle them in, to use equipment and weapons and like far cry the shit out of some fobs, man, and and open fast travel points and and call warthogs from the sky and there's an upgrade system so you find these things called Spartan cores. And you find them throughout the game, and then you can upgrade things, like you can give your grappling hook more charges, or you can make cooldowns less time. You can add shield to, you know, Master Chief. I'm not going to go into the spoilers of this game, but this is truly the best Halo has been since Halo 3. And I'm going to take my time. I played about 10 hours of this game, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to put this aside, because I'm going to have to start over. And I wasn't even mad that I have to start this game over. It's so fucking good. <laughs> so I remember when you first told me and described to me how Gears 5 was different from the other Gears of War. Does mm-hmm. it feel like that? 
No, this actually... So, you kind of start the game off in a, in a linear kind of area. Mm-hmm. And then you get to Zeta, Zeta Halo, which is the plant, you know, the new Halo ring that you go to. And then it basically just turns into like this fully open... Like, there's... I haven't made it to the next area of the ring, but I think this is just going to be like, you know, here's an area, here's an area, here's an area. But that area is just massive and open and you can just stay there. Whereas Gears was like, here's chapter one, here's this big open world. But then when you go to chapter... Yeah, when you go to to chapter two, then you can't like go back. But in this one, it is literally just... Yeah, crisis model. Yeah, exactly. Whereas this one is just like, here, just open. Just play. So... I think I'm most excited because like... I'll be honest, I, like, the first Halo I played was Halo 3. That's a good I've game. never even been through all of Halo 2. Halo 2 is a good I know, game. I need to sit down and just play them all, I understand. Yes. Um, But man, Halo 1's, like, just the concept of, like, essentially a planet being held within this gigantic ring. And being able to look up, Halo Remastered is, like, a masterpiece because the game is already a fantastic, but the fact that you can just switch between old and new graphics simultane like at any time is amazing because that has to be run simultaneously. And being able to look up into the sky and see the ring wrap up to the point where you can't see it anymore. Like that's that's the type of science fiction I love in video games where it's like I would never be able to experience this, but because I have full agency over this character it feels real Mm -hmm. and it's like there there was a couple moments in the original mass effect that was like that where i was like oh my god like the citadel the first time you walk in the citadel it's just gigantic you're like i don't know there's something about that that like i'm excited to go back to the halo ring because like that's where i felt like this game became like a full science fiction masterpiece in terms of gaming, I realize if you held this lore up in comparison to other science fiction, it might fall apart. But well, I don't the, know. The lore in Halo is super is deep, deep but it, but I, I I I honestly can't speak to whether or not it would hold up against m- more higher end science fiction. Is my point. But I um, do I do want to say fuck, it's just yeah exciting. It, it's it's very exciting, and and I don't want to get you too hyped up, but I'm gonna make this comparison, and you're gonna you're gonna get more excited for this. I don't know how much of, like, Halo, like, you you haven't played a lot of Halo, but, like, you ever notice, well, you didn't, did you play 4 and 5? I started 4, I played, played, I started 4, didn't get very far, I played, unfortunately, most of 5. Okay, so here's the thing, you know how in 5, it, there was something about the way that that game delivered the story that just didn't flow? This game there feels... was a story in Halo Five. There, I, I, there was. I just thought it was literally we were just pulling lines out of a hat. Zeta Halo is the equivalent of Three Four Three's Death Stranding. Like the way that this game delivers the story is so fucking addictive. Like it's so well done. It's paced well. It's explained well. It's coherent. Like you get into the care. Like I never thought. Playing Halo as long as I've been playing Halo, 20 years now, I have never felt that most of the characters outside of the Arbiter, like the enemies that you fight, have had a whole lot of personality. Every single character that I've run into in this game that is an enemy has fucking character, and I remember them. Like, 343 has done an outstanding job of characterizing people and and creatures in this game. And you remember them, and you fear the ones you're supposed to fear, and you question the ones that are supposed to be, like, mysterious. And the story... I'm really dancing around this because shit happens in that first kind of hour of that game that really kind of explains what's going on, and they don't... I don't want to spoil it. And on top of that, they don't want us to spoil it. But it's good. It's very good. When does this come out? Tuesday. Or... Fuck! <laughs> Sorry, Wednesday. It's the eighth. So, <laughs> I didn't yeah. realize it was that close. That was close to the end of the week, but I'm like, hey. nope. It's out on Wednesday, baby. <laughs> oh, pop, pop. No, we're 
I'm spending my time. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't want to jump to conclusion yet. I've only played for ten hours, but this might have shot right up to the top of my game of the year. I got to play through it though. Well, it's gonna have a hard time beating um, Inscription for me, but it was gonna have a hard time beating Psychonauts two for me or Resident Evil eight. Fuck. But I'm gonna tell you, it might. It's really good. It's really good. It's so good. Halo's back, and I'm excited. You know, all those people worried that, like, hey, the multiplayer is going to be good, but that campaign's questionable. I'm shaking my head feverishly. That that campaign is good, and it's on Game Pass, so you don't have to buy it. Crazy, right? All right. Whew! That was ninety minutes of video games. Let's talk about what's coming out this week. That was 90 minutes of video games. Let's talk about video games. Well, let's talk about video games we're not playing. Let's talk about what's coming out this week. Well, actually, what am I playing? Never mind. Let's, fuck, don't, don't question me on these things. Uh, Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. We've got Ever Forward, Monopoly Madness, Witchwood, whatever the hell that is. Um... Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker coming to PlayStation. Heavenly Bodies. The Dungeon of Nahalback. The Amulet of Chaos Chicken Edition. <laughs> I'm sorry, that made me choke. Uh, everybody's favorite 12 minutes uh, coming to PlayStation. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The New Edition. And a little game called Halo Infinite. I like to picture. Uh... This is terrible. I like the picture that it's just Regis Philbin's corpse. In the oh. new edition of Who Wants to a Millionaire? Um, also, the DLC, I guess, for Terminator Resistance is coming to PlayStation 5? No, no it's new DLC. That's why I said DLC. No, but, but there's, there's the previous one where you got to play as a Terminator, and now this is a, another DLC for it. Oh, I didn't even know there was a first DLC. I thought this was yeah, the first so they, DLC. Yeah, so they... So there was the game, and then they updated the game, and when they updated the game, except for, like, PS4 and Xbox versions, I think, they had the short side campaign where you played as a Terminator, and now this is another short campaign, if I'm correct. It's another part, I just don't know how long that that DLC is. I like that game, but fuck them, because they released it on Xbox and PlayStation, and they only upgraded it and added the DLC to the PlayStation version. So, I bought the Xbox version. And basically they said, fuck me, so fuck them. And what sucks, because that was a good game. (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, After the Fall, uh, we're on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One now. We got After the Fall, Ever Forward, uh, Mickey Storm and the Cursed Mask, Rune Factory 4 Special, Transient Extended Edition, Arcade Arcade, Arcade Archives, Dragon Buster, Monopoly Madness, uh, Monopoly Plus, Plus Monopoly Madness, Rico London, Witchwood, The Wild at Heart, and Vaporum Lockdown. Uh, Xbox is all pretty much the same stuff, except we've also got Halo Infinite, Sam and Max Beyond Time and Space Remastered, Alexio, Antarctica 88, and Mini Madness. Mini Madness. It says Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeons coming to Xbox. Is it? I didn't think it was. I thought it was only Switch and PlayStation. I'm checking. I swore it wasn't coming to Xbox. For some reason, this lists it for Xbox. I'm looking. I don't see anything here. Yeah, that's why I think that's a mislabel. All right, let's do the Switch. We've got yeah. 0x0 Minimalist, 9-Ball Pocket, Beyond a Steel Sky. Oh, I guess that's coming out for everything this week. Uh, Ever Forward, Gang Beasts, Life is Strange, True Colors, Love 3. 12 Minutes is also coming to the Switch, man. Y'all can get excited. Y'all, you need to avoid that. But listen, it, Love 3, you can probably buy that. It's probably about 5 bucks or 10 bucks. Buy Love 3. I know the fucking verse game. It's a hard-ass platformer. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duel Psyche Battle Royale. 
They're making a Hold Yu-Gi-Oh! On. Battle Royale? Yu-Gi-Oh! Battle Royale. How the fuck does that even work? You drop a hundred cards on an island. Oh no, I know what this is, isn't it? Oh no, it's not. Okay, I should say, because Yu-Gi-Oh! got really... I can't believe I'm saying it. Yu-Gi-Oh! got really stupid for one, a while there, where it was like a racing game with cards. And I was like, I don't know how the fuck that makes any sense. But uh, now I need to figure this out. I will have information about it shortly. All right, we also got Ball Lab, Sam and Max, Transient Extended Edition, Arcade Archives, Dragon Buster, Kubanashi, Recollection, uh, Loop Hero making its way over to the Switch, the Monopoly games, Monster Rancher, Monster Rancher 1 and 2 DX, and Monster Rancher 2, uh, Super Impossible Road, a Year of Springs, Memories of East Coast, and The Wild at Heart. And those are okay. your new releases for the week. So, I don't think it's actually a Battle Royale game. I think it's just in the title, because I can't see any information about this, but I would need to read this because I just, I died a little inside. <clears throat> Early pre-order bonus... Amiibo cards. What? Amiibo fucking Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Are, can you still use Amiibo cards? Nah, yeah, they're just RFID chips. Like you can use all the um, Animal Crossing ones in Animal Crossing. Okay. Um, I didn't even know Amiibo you... cards were still a thing. Oh, they, they there's another series of Animal Crossing ones now. There was only originally four. Now there's five. Why Nintendo they gotta start... keep making shit work that don't work? Well, I'll tell you the reason why the Amiibo card started working. You can get certain villagers that way. You go up, you activate it multiple times, it invites them to your island, then if you have room, you can move them in. Okay. And people want that. I don't. I don't want that. Alright, you ready for news? No. <laughs> Hey, you remember Fall Guys? Okay. Uh, well, apparently... Yeah, there, there you go. Uh, the, the developer had to come out on Twitter and say that the Xbox and Switch versions are not coming until 2022. Well, right at the height game. of their popularity. Jesus Christ. It, like, what is the point? Like, Fall Guys and Among Us were like this little thing for a while. I think Among Us can return... Maybe. It's on Game Pass, probably. But, like, it's taken you so long to put these games on other consoles that, like, by the time you get there, nobody's gonna care. Uh, Xbox has added what they call Clarity Boost to cloud gaming. It's designed to make the games look a little sharper when using on cloud. Uh, oh, did it lock up? There we go. Uh, has anybody tried cloud gaming yet? Yeah, I play it sometimes. I play it on the console and I boot it on my phone every now and then to get my quests. Do you actually play? I have. I tested it. Um, the phone one with the touch controls ain't my jam. Uh uh-uh, no. I don't. I don't like touch controls. But I mean, it works fine. I wouldn't play my games regularly like that, but. You know, I have to say the cloud gaming on the Xbox. Works pretty stinking well. I mean, you do get some artifacting and stuff like that, but it's yeah. it's okay. I I actually played through the first level of unpacking cloud gaming to see if I'd like it, which is kind of how it's designed, you know, see if you like the game. Um, and then I ended up downloading it, so it worked well enough to play through a first level. So I think it's yeah. fine. No, uh, it, it works. Yep, it's better than having to download a sixty gig game. To see no if I kidding. Hate it. <laughs> no kidding, right? Uh, Deep Rock Galactic and The Ascent are both uh, coming to the PlayStation, which is cool. More games, more places. Good for everybody. Timed exclusives are stupid and suck, and we still don't <laughs> we still don't have Final Fantasy VII remake for the Xbox or PC. <laughs> I don't know if that's coming. At, At this, this point, point, yeah. Like, Who cares? <laughs> some people were Square will you know make more I, money. That's what they you know, care. You know why I say who cares? Because this thing isn't ever getting finished. So, how many years are we in, and we've only had the first one? 
like man, I don't know. They 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 redid it from scratch when they didn't like. Can I? I want to know. You already know you already Connect can't finish what's available did. on the PlayStation Four. You realize that? Yeah, I know, but I'm I'm more interested in what the fuck Cyber Connect Two showed Square, where they were like, "No, we're doing it all over." I don't know. That thing is never going to be done, and the fact that PlayStation Four owners, who are the ones who spent all the money on that game, can't even fucking finish it. They can't finish the first game yet, the first part. That DLC for Yuffie that came out, they can't play that. So, is Final Fantasy VII Remake, you're going to have to have four consoles to finish that thing? Like, for real? Jesus Christ. I, I said it when they announced this thing, and they put up a $350 version of Part 1 I said, Square is going to take you and bend you the fuck over for the next 15 years. And they're going to make thousands of dollars off of these people that have to play this game. Fuck Square. Speaking of nothing, Respawn is removing Titanfall from sale and eventually streaming services. I mean, I why? hate to say it. Too. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I, I guess they're just not supporting it. And, but I, I. But they're leaving the that, servers that, up. That that was in the statement that they're leaving yeah, the servers up. I'm. There has to be something licensed in there. But there's not right that we know of. But God knows I, what I, actually. Like I, I, you'd have to scroll through the credits, Ken, to find out. But if most, something is owned but by most developers else. will tell you that. Like Forza specifically says, "Hey, we can't do this anymore because of the car license." Like Respawn just comes out and says, "We ain't selling this game." Anymore. Respawn has not been like the same company since Titanfall Two tanked. <laughs> you know, I, I, and like I know people like Jedi Fallen Order, and I know people like um. Apex. Apex. But it's just like, it's not the same company. They're another EA arm, and that's just it. Well, hey, let's tie that. They, they're, they're, they're one of the better ones, but it's just like, I I don't expect anything. From, I'm surprised that they even mentioned Titanfall. and I'm surprised they even let people know and that it just didn't, it didn't just disappear. But I also am going to say something. Titanfall 1 kind of flopped. So... Well, it the did better than Titanfall, Titanfall 2. 2. <laughs> Sorry? It did better than Titanfall 2. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't It couldn't do worse than Titanfall 2. Well, here's... So. I'm going to tie this into the next story. The, the, the head of Battlefield left. You know who's in control of that now? One of the guys from... Vince Respawn. Zampella from Respawn is now the head of Battlefield. Great. You know Battlefield that's kind of collapsing in on itself right now? Battlefield is a dumpster fire. It's almost like you shouldn't get rid of campaigns because maybe there'd be something for people to cling on to. It's almost like maybe you should have delayed that game because it's fucking broken. (laughs) That too. But it's like, because there's no campaign, there's no part of it that people are enjoying, so they can't even be like, well, at least the campaign's good. I played Battlefield 2042 for an hour and I had the exact same experience that I've had with every Battlefield for years. I spawn, I run for 10 minutes, I get shot, I die. That's 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 my Battlefield experience so far. I, I'm, I'm never going to play another Battlefield game. Yeah, but... I, I just can't, I can't stand playing that. It, it's crazy to me that Battlefield and Call of Duty shit the bed this year. I can no, see I'm Battlefield. I can see Battlefield, but Call of Duty still shocks me. Uh no, I I'm sorry. I that that doesn't shock me very much at all. I I think people are more interested in spending time with a singular game now and having updates to that than they are to just buy the new one because it's new. Like you've made all these changes on Call of Battlefield's a little different because it's not every year. Um, and even when it is, it's like they kind of play the same, even though they're like supposed to be World War II, but the planes all fly like modern planes, <laughs> and guns fire like modern guns. 
Um, I think, I think the problem with Call of Duty is like there isn't a through line. Like they're not making steps forward; they're just making steps back and forth, like laterally. So, oh, this game plays like this. This one has wall running. Oh, this one doesn't anymore. Well. Well, they're also... Okay, but stick to one because, like, these people generally, like, the crowd leaves to the next game. So now people, I think, are just hitting that point where it's like there's not enough change. And when there is change, it's not necessarily good. Like, why am I going to upgrade, like, Battle... So Black Ops 4, that was, that was a bomb because it was online only. And then... What was it? Um, Modern Warfare was received okay. And then it was... Fuck, man, I can't even remember. World War II? I don't remember. Like, it's just this jump back and forth of, like, what the fuck are we doing with this franchise? And uh, I think people are more interested in trying new things. Also, like, well, Call of Duty is ne- not necessarily doing it for people anymore. We should also mention the fact that Halo came out. Is doing really well. Fortnite's still doing really well. Oh, also, Halo and Fortnite, they're fucking free. Battlefield is $70 for multiplayer. And that's it. $70. Oh! And I bet they still sell you loot boxes. Well, no, they also sell you a battle pass and a season pass. Yeah, get right fucked. (laughs) So, we can never, we can never, you know... Not every free to play game is a hit, but a good free to play game will always be a hit. Fortnite, hit. Halo multiplayer, hit. Seventy dollar battlefield that doesn't even have all the content? Shit. That's what that is. Yeah. I also found it very interesting going back to the Titanfall thing of like all these people going, Oh my god, game preservation, Titanfall like, it was fucking online only. Yeah, there there's nothing to preserve there. And that is it unfortunate? Absolutely. Yeah. But at the same time, this is a bigger issue with online games. Like, I can't point out any because I'm not an MMO fan, but talk to anybody that's got engaged with an MMO. City and of Heroes. Had it... Listen to Wombat stories about City yeah. of Heroes. Dead or, and this is this is the reason why you have World of Warcraft Classic, although I think they've missed the point Um. By by continuously moving forward with that instead of building new content for that, anyways, um, the, when games evolve, they they can change so much. So they either die or they change too much to where it's not even the same game anymore. And we look at that as a positive most times because usually when a game changes, it was because it was trash before. Like No Man's Sky, I'd love to see someone defend. No Man's Sky in an earlier state. One point oh, yeah. I'm a well, huge fan fucking, of yeah. No Man's Sky. One point oh, yeah. <laughs> but then you you do have these online games that do significantly change. Like with Warcraft, World of Warcraft, like people start to be able to talk to each other from the two different sides. But that was not the case originally. Well, look at Final Fantasy fourteen. Different. Well, final okay again. Final Fantasy fourteen is an example, though, where it's like, oh, this this needed to be rebooted. But you're right. There is there's maybe someone out there that's like, no, I loved what it was originally, and it's not the same anymore. But those because it's all server side and nothing is really owned by the person playing. When that's gone, it's gone. <laughs> you know, and so it takes people like stealing code and hosting their own servers. Or for the twenty people what. that want to play Matrix online, play yeah, like it's just, <laughs> but it's a shame because like was Matrix online good or bad? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I, I've never had the opportunity to play it. You want to hear something crazy about the Matrix online? It's canonical to the movies, and that's where fucking Morpheus dies. In the, I'm not in surprised. The, in that, that game, the Wachowskis that... were like that. Yeah. Into multimedia. I mean, Enter the Matrix is also canon, as as is the Animatrix. Speaking so. of the, speaking of the Matrix, the Matrix Awakens experience was leaked. I'm okay. assuming that's a tie-in with the movie. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but yeah, like just dead stuff in general. Like anything that's a uh, dark. I 
I suggest going and watching Ross's game dungeon. Uh, he's a cursed farms on YouTube because he's really passionate about a lot of games that just can't be played anymore. And uh, he's covered stuff like Dark Spore, which was an action Diablo like spore title, just totally unplayable. Uh, there was a Need for Speed Online game. Yes, there was. That had two of the cities from, I think it was the Need for Speed Underground City and the Most Wanted City, and they were combined into one world. And it was the only time, like, one of those was visible during the day. And the other time it was only visible, like, it was the only time the other city was visible at night. And it was like, I know that's a weird thing to point out, but it's like, it did change those environments. Like, they had a time of day cycle and stuff, and it's like, that experience is gone. So if you ever wanted to play all the Need for Speed games, let's say the 3D ones, because I'm sure there's a bunch of 2D shit on cell phones that are gone too, but that's all gone. Anything that's server-based just disappears eventually. I still and have it's... my disc for Mag. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Fucking uh, Chrome Hounds is a good... You can find a copy of Chrome Hounds for like a dollar at yeah. your local game store. It's, it's it's a coaster. That's like all these people holding on to these discs for Fortnite, and I have a massive action game disc, and I'm like, dude, this thing is fucking pointless. Excuse me. I, I think the Fortnite one... It's not going to do anything. It's online. No, I I think, though, it... I think it has the um, base version of... Like, I think it more so it is for people that are just trying to capture a moment in time. Because I think it has the base version of uh, Save the World. Yeah, but you have to be online to play that. Yeah, but it has the information on the disc. For, is, but what does that serve? That serves you can, nothing. You, someone can can decompile it or whatever. But I'm just saying. How many people are playing Massive Action Game with uh, the decompiled disc right now? Man, I'm not, I'm just saying. Like, and also, it's something to own for Fortnite fans. I'm not saying it's a good reason. <laughs> yeah, I like to I like to take up space in my in my house with plastic. Uh, you, it's useless. Overwatch. They sell fucking Overwatch discs. I don't own one. What I'm saying, it's the same fucking thing. It's but who, do you know a bigger fan of that game than the two people on the show right now? And I can guarantee you neither one of us owns a physical disc. I also probably don't disc. know any more annoying fans than the two <laughs> on the show right now. I, I own the physical disc for Overwatch. Ah! What the fuck is wrong with you, Drew? It Look at that, like, Ken. It was nineteen ninety nine on a sale. So? Fucking words, whore. So? No, he's, he's not a good fan, man. I've played more than uh. him. He doesn't have. It's, I don't have no discs. It you. <laughs> you want me, bitch? <laughs> right, fight, boys. Fight for. Uh, fight for. Uh, fight for Overwatch's love. I uh, no, they don't love me. I know that. No, clearly. <laughs> what was it? I was. Updating. I was joking with somebody on Twitter about that the other day. Like, I, I'm so tired of seeing these guys, like, like posting Twitter pics. Like, look what Microsoft sent me. This six hundred dollar box of shit. And then they show, like, their museum, Xbox history, and they've played, like, 400 games. And I'm like, eh, fuck you. I played 4,000 games. You can eat my ass. Which Sin probably you? doesn't notice me. Well, he's just fallen, he's fallen into angry video games. <laughs> eat my ass! <laughs> <laughs> Diarrhea dog shit. <laughs> Microsoft put as much money into making more Xbox Series consoles instead of sending all these people 4,000 controllers. I mean, we've had that talk openly on Twitter that it's dumb. Oh, it's so I, dumb. I wouldn't, I wouldn't under, if they send me a box full of crap, like, am I going to say no? I suppose not, because I'm a whore. Um, der. Uh, <laughs> and then, no, I think you like, had it right the just, first time. Yeah, okay. Well, I was making clear that I was both. Um, <laughs> But it's like, it is weird. It's like when uh, Rockstar sent out the um, R Red Dead Revolver, Red Dead Redemption 2. Ah, I don't know why I folded back on Revolver. Boxes to people. It's like, why? What? I actually got that one. It had the Zippo in it. And it's like, it's neat stuff, but it's just like... Dude, I don't know where any of it is. I don't understand, like... <laughs> Why would you think this is going to help a score? And usually, it's for companies that you don't, you know, don't have to worry about a score. They're going to put out something quality, anyways. Well, the thing is, is a doing? lot of a lot of the people that get this stuff, they don't score it. They don't. 
I know it doesn't make any fucking sense. They just po- they post a picture on Twitter, and it's like that that the that the Xbox community <sighs> manager likes. <laughs> like you know, it'd be one thing if you were giving a streamer some shirts and hats and stuff, because I get it then, because it's branding. But like, you're not gonna be able to tell that Zippo lighter on the fucking shelf in the background. No. It doesn't make any sense to me. It just doesn't. Oh, well. I do find it funny, though, that you got that exact box. <laughs> I did. It had a candle and this... playing cards and a Zippo. And I know this is weird, and I'm putting this out here. I know no one has one, and I'm just not... I'm too lazy to buy one. There's only one thing that I want that is, like, was, um... For, like... Well, there's a, there's a couple. There mostly are pins for, like, Monster Boy when it came out. There's pins that were for press only or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. But the real thing that I want, and I believe it was press only, but maybe it was for conventions too. When De Blob 2 came out, they released a De Blob figurine. And I want that De Blob figure. You're the only person in the world that's out here trying to get a De Blob I figurine. I absolutely understand. I just, I look at the prices on, I've looked at them on eBay and I'm like, I'm not paying that. I don't know who on eBay thinks they're going to get that kind of money for a De Blob figure. i just... That's not really like a high profile tier. No, no, it's not. That seems dumb. All right, uh, Quake got a horde mode. So neat. Uh, Kingdoms of Amalur is getting a new DLC uh, called Fates Worn on December fourteenth. Who is delivering that? Well, it's whoever bought it, right? It's THQ Nordic. So THQ Nordic. I'm assuming whoever ported that that remastered it. What's that one called? Which one? Which one? What, what are we talking about? The re reckoning. That's right. Oh yeah, yeah. That's THQ Nordic. Yeah, but I, I'm assuming whoever ported that version is doing the DLC. Oh, huh. okay. Oh wait, this isn't like DLC for the original game. It's new DLC for the new version. Yes, uh-huh. they announced it when they said they Whoa. were remastering it. I didn't realize that. Okay, yeah. I thought it was just DLC from the original game that they were oh. remastering <laughs> afterwards. Sorry. Grid Legends is coming out February 25th. I forgot they announced that game. <laughs> I forget that there's a Grid games until I see Grid come up. I, I forgot they announced that. That's the one with the FMV shit. I forgot about that game. Nintendo, being Nintendo, is going to drip feed the fuck out of these N64 games. They announced the first new, ga- new game. M. Not Z. M. Paper Mario is coming to Switch on December 14th. Back when it was an RPG. Yeah, but it's just one one fucking game. Yeah, could they uh, finally put out Thousand Year Door again? I know I own a copy, but like other people don't, and that's a really good game. And you shouldn't have to pay 150 fucking dollars to play it. We shouldn't have to wait three months in between one N64 release. No, it's been, what, a month? That's st- but it's one game. Still, it's only been a month. One. It's better than nothing for three, which is usually how they do it. Well, the next one will be out in February. PlayStation Plus, we talked about the games coming to it. We were correct. It was Godfall, Mortal Shell, and <laughs> Lego Super Villains. But let's talk. <laughs> okay. PlayStation. Okay. Once again, repeat. Play Hold on. There's two parts Super... to this. There's two parts Play to this. Play the DC Super Villains. Play the DC supervillains. Ken, now you can go. Okay, there's two parts to this. The first one is Mortal Shell is the PS4 version. I thought we knew that. Yeah, but I don't think the upgrade's free, is it? Is it free? I I don't know, but I think that game is pretty good looking on PS4 anyways, so I don't think you'll miss much, but All right, let's uh, talk about I, I don't know. Let's talk about Godfall. Okay, just just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I know what happens. So, yeah, Godfall no. in PS Plus is the PS5 game, but it's not the whole game. <laughs> it's what they're calling the Challenger Edition. Uh, it's just so scummy. It doesn't have the single player campaign. It just has yes, in game. It just has in game content. Chef's kiss. 
Oh, God. I mean, look. How will Randy Pitchford be able to afford extra USB sticks so he can lose the <laughs> medieval times if he doesn't charge you for the content of the game? Can't just be giving away games for free now. Yeah, I love how the, in the statement for this coming out, they're like, yeah, play the Challenger Edition and then purchase the single player campaign. I was just like, you know what? Oh, I own cute. that game and no thank you. I'd have taken it for free. But there's no way in hell I'd have... I feel bad. I feel legitimately bad for people who paid $70 to play Godfall. Listen, you make... You you eventually hit a point with Gearbox stuff where you just go, I'm done with you. I'm not making this mistake again. And then they turn around and they're like, this game is only possible on PlayStation 5. Well, here's a PS4 version. (laughs) Oh, is that coming from the magician Randy Pitchford? No, that 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 happened. They, they when that I game know, came out. That's what I'm saying, though. He's a liar, <laughs> professionally, as a, mag- as a as a magician. He's a liar. Remember that time where he said that, like, oh no, we definitely worked on Aliens Colonial Marines. Remember how that was a lie? <laughs> remember when he... Lying Randy Pitchford? Remember when he yelled liar? at reviewers for asking for codes for Tribes of Midgard? He's like, it's only twenty dollars. Can't you buy it? I'm like, all right. I don't want to buy it. If you want me to cover it, you give me a code. <laughs> it's only twenty dollars, Randy. Randy. Pitchford... I'm sure that's okay for you when you're, you know, embezzling money, allegedly. Allegedly, I have to say, allegedly. Uh although it is a pretty known fact that you took money from Sega to make. Borderlands and just outsourced the rest of Colonial Marines to another studio. Did I say that out loud? Allegedly. Allegedly? Also, allegedly go fuck yourself Randy Pitchford. Take Two has stopped Haze Light from formally trademarking It Takes Two. Yeah, don't they have to pull the game, though, too? No, they just have to change the name no. of it. That... <laughs> No one's making the mistake, company that puts their logo as T2. You know what? Get figgity fucked. In my game of the year, I would like to award Untitled Co-op Game in my top ten. I think I would change the name to It Takes Two to be this much of a rock star. Fuck you. I would change the name of the game to Fuck the Oscars. How's that? Does that work? Yeah. I mean, fuck 2K. Alright, last news story. We ready to... and all the other companies under that fucking banner. We ready to talk about this? I don't know what we're talking about, so I'm sure. Alright, we're going to talk about PlayStation Spartacus. I don't know what this is, honestly. Alright, this news report came from Bloomberg. Yesterday, right? Yeah, Bloomberg. Before yesterday. Um, this, is, uh, this is supposedly Sony's kind of... I don't want to call it answer, but maybe response to Xbox Game Pass. So, uh, okay, yeah, I do know. When you said that, I was like, I don't know of any hardware that's called this. No, this is not hardware. This is, um, from the more that I hear and the more that I read about this, I think it's more them realigning PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. So according to the report, Sony is going to be announcing this in the spring. Uh, it will be getting rid of PS Plus and P- PlayStation Now and turning it into a three-tiered system. So the first tier is PlayStation Plus, essentially. Tier 2 is PlayStation Now, where you can play, you know, a collection of PS4 and PS5 games, eventually PS5 games. And then the third tier, which is the most interesting to me, is the ability to play PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games on the PlayStation 5. Now, it is worth noting that... They will not be putting first-party games in day and date like Xbox does, so that is why I am not calling this an answer to Game Pass. Because that's what Game Pass is. It's first-party, you know, Xbox games, day and date, into the service. So, what do you think? I don't have a PlayStation that'll take advantage of this, so I don't give a It'll shit. It'll work on PS4. Oh, well, 
I, I don't care enough. I, I, I'm sorry, but it's just like until the, this is at, until I see the offerings on the table, I don't care. What you know, games? I, I just what games would you want? That's just it. None. <laughs> okay. Like I, I, what are you gonna do? Judging off of their past offerings on PlayStation now, <laughs> God of War three years after the fact. When it's like ten bucks on sale, wow! <laughs> so why would I buy a subscription when it's ten dollars to fucking just buy the game outright on disc if necessary? Like, I still think it's interesting that they don't put PS Five games on PlayStation now. I so can I'm, make money off of them. I yeah. mean, I can't imagine Returnal is still selling, right? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think maybe because it's like one of the few like it it looks like if you see that on a shelf because I've looked at the areas where PlayStation 5 games are in like a Walmart it does look like one of the higher end products because it doesn't have a PlayStation 4 or Xbox version sitting in the other shelves. Um, it's only under the PS5 unlike other PS5 games where I can see the copy of the PS4 version right next to it, and then go, well, what's the difference? They're the same price. Yeah, I understand that mentality, and it sucks because it's actually consumer-friendly, but it makes it look worse. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting down on anyone. It's just, like, it, it does look like a higher-end product in comparison to, like, Puyo Puyo Tetris and Super Monkey Ball and Unfortunately, those are the stuff that are getting physical releases for the most part on on PlayStation Five in big box stores like Walmart. Because if you go into an EV Games, obviously that changes, or GameStop as they're now in Canada too. So whatever. Um, but uh, if you go into a game store, obviously the selection is going to be a little bit wider, so that won't be the case. But when you're in a Walmart, that that stuff is all visible together because. It, they're not devoting a whole cabinet to PlayStation Five yet. Yeah, it's it's a weird so, it's a weird thing to go and look at it and be like, well, you know, the PlayStation Five these are new games, whereas on the Xbox it's like, well, they are new games, but they just work, and it makes yeah. it look like, oh, well, you're still running the old games, so who cares? Yeah, it. I think I think the though it does look annoying when you go, oh, this will play on the new system. And you look at the PlayStation stuff, not only is there no sign that the PlayStation 4 discs work on PS5, and I say this, people be like, oh, but you you know, you know, I know people listening to this podcast know because we're into video games, but like an average consumer doesn't necessarily know that. So they see PS5 and then they see a Super Monkey Ball, Banana Mania, PS5 and PS4. Well, if the PS4 version doesn't say plays on PlayStation 5 and they're both the same price or whatever, well, I'm going to assume the PlayStation 4 version doesn't work. Now, you might say, why would you buy the PlayStation 4 version? Version, But it's like there's no paperwork or stickers on the glass or anything that says, hey, PlayStation 5 plays PS4 game. And it doesn't matter right now anyways, because right now you walk into a Walmart, there's no Xboxes, there's no PlayStations, there's no consoles to buy. So it's this really weird time frame where there's no consoles in the shelves and there's, you know, new games coming out pushing the older consoles aside. At least with the Xbox stuff, it looks like new games are coming out still. With the PlayStation stuff, as more and more PS5 games take over the cases, like, it looks weird. Because that stuff isn't backwards compatible. So, you know, and then the only console that's on the shelf is Nintendo stuff. it's a weird but time. You asked me. You asked me like, what would it take? Honestly, it would take a, something a little bit more than like, if they really wanted to catch up or 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 really compete with Xbox. Like Sony has something that Microsoft doesn't have, and that's like a big Japanese market. And I think it would be interesting to have them go and get RPGs that, as much as like you know. Uh, NIS America and um, uh, Spike Chunsoft and all that stuff isn't big names. 
that audience is on PlayStation for the most part. And Switch now, but like... Well, they're definitely that only... they're definitely starting to like AI the Insomnium Files came out on Xbox recently, but, but that would be where I if I were like oh I have to compete with Microsoft on on this level I would go okay let's get the niche titles in that our audience has like we have maintained the audience on because we've been the only person that's been doing this for a long enough time because you know Nintendo's not going to offer a, a subscription service for that. No, so they don't have to. You don't have to, and you don't really have to worry about competing with Nintendo because they're a very different console. So it's like, yeah, I'm gonna go and get um, Tokyo Xanadu and and all these weirder, older RPGs too. That like I'm gonna make it so those are available now. It's it's very because... interesting with the Japanese market now because PlayStation and Xbox are almost, and this is weird to say, they're almost on a level playing field. Like, PlayStation has dropped drastically in Japan, and Xbox has come up, thanks to the S and Game Pass. But both of them are a joke compared to Nintendo. Oh, for sure. But yeah, I'm just, like, looking at my wall. Like, you know, I, I know Knights of Azure isn't going to light the world on fire, but, like, that audience has stuck primarily with PlayStation over the years. JRPG fans have stuck with PlayStation. Some of them have moved to Nintendo, but I wouldn't try to. I wouldn't let that hemorrhage anymore. And like, Sony's so focused on their first party stuff, but they're not going to give that away for free. So they need to figure out another method in which to compete with Microsoft because Microsoft gives away their stuff day and date as long as you have Game Pass. Well, yeah, if you're not going to compete with that level because you think your products are worth more, and maybe they are, maybe they aren't, depends on the product. Um, I would, I would at least try to go for the niche audiences that have stuck with PlayStation. It's a very interesting thing to look at where PlayStation charges you... So just And I know these aren't the same kind of game, but it's just an interesting observation. I think Returnal ended up selling, what, like 500,000 copies or something like that? And it was $70, right? Forza Horizon 5, which is available for free to people who are in Game Pass sold something like 3 million copies but it was still free. Yeah. Which is, that's just such a weird thing to be like, well, the game that Microsoft is giving away for free sold more than the game. Like, it probably all sold Ratchet too. Yeah. So I, I will counterpoint that with the fact that you can also get Forza Horizon 5 on Xbox One. You can only get Returnal and Ratchet on PlayStation Five. There's not that many PlayStation Fives out there. That you uh, but but Ken's of. not. You're you're. I understand what you're saying. But Ken's saying that like if you offer the game for free, then the the amount of like it the, they're counting the amount of actual sales, not the what's Game Pass players. Yeah, they that, still but... sold a ton <laughs> by giving away the game for free. So even if you say like a third of that, right? There was no loss in comparison to other titles on next gen systems. Yeah, like and like that's that's the problem. Like Sony says, "Oh, this game is seventy dollars, and it's going." They're kind of playing the Nintendo card. It's gonna be seventy dollars for a long time. Yeah, I don't see that coming down at all this generation. I see every Sony game, and sometimes it works. Like I'm sure God of War Ragnarok will make it worth seventy dollars. Returnal, and, and, maybe not so much. And you'll see, you know, I, I'll end up buying um, Horizon and God of War for PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought, even though I'm not as much of a fan of the Spider-Man game, I liked it. I, I did. I just wasn't my favorite game ever. Um, and I didn't love it as much as other people. I still thought it was worth that money. Um, but it's just like, if you're, they're thinking about it in a sense of like, well, it'll cut into our sales if I release it for free. Maybe, but you're already getting money from the people. Or if that's the only game they play, then you haven't lost anything. And if it's somebody that goes, Oh, I don't, I've been hearing good things. Let me try it out. And you only have it on for the first month or whatever. And then it goes back up to price. It's just free hype. And some of those people will inevitably pay because they won't finish the game in the month. 
Yeah. Like there's ways to do it and give away the game for free, for, even if it's small, short of span of time. But like that's not what they do. They let their game devalue to a point where like when they offer it, it's almost worth nothing because I can buy the game for next to nothing. Yeah, why wouldn't I just buy? It? You know who I think has this figured out? I think, I think HBO Max did the best. With this, so like they launched, so we'll use Suicide Squad as an example. They launched that movie into HBO Max for 30 days. After that 30 yeah. days was up, they took it off, and then a week later, they put it up for sale. And all the people that heard about how good it was that didn't watch it ended up buying it. And now they let it sit on sale for like two months, and then they'll put it back on HBO Max to get more subscribers. Like, it, th- to me, that is the most genius way to do it because you get the people that want to watch it. And then let's say when it leaves, like for me, for example, I want to watch it again. I go buy it digitally, even though I've already seen it. And the people that missed it that heard how good it was went and bought it as well. And then eventually they bring it back once the sales slow down to let people subscribe to HBO Max to watch it again. Like, that's that's a good way to do it. And I don't think anybody else is doing it that way. It's, Sony has the old school, and maybe it's maybe it's because they own their own studio. But they, they they think about video games like Hollywood tries to think about movies where oh we have to make our money at the box office. And I don't know how many stories I've heard about movies that go to the like theaters and kind of bomb and then become huge hits on DVD. Yeah, right. So it's like the audience. The audience that you think you're going to get by or or lose is going to be engaging regardless. You're trying to expand it to engross more people who maybe wouldn't have engaged with it. If if you offer God of War Ragnarok and you're for $70 and it's coming day and date and it's $70 for the year, say for their place whatever PlayStation is going to actually call their service. And you know, that $70 is still yours at the end of the day if you're a PlayStation. The person the person that wants to play day and date will either pay for the subscription service or buy the game. So like there's no loss there. You you subsidize the people like you subsidize the people that play more with the people that don't play as much. I have Game Pass. I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't really touched much on it. I played maybe one... I played Psychonauts 2, got my money's worth this year. I'm kind of done, but I'll be playing Halo. But when I'm not playing video games and other people are, and they're just kind of collecting money from me, I'm paying to cover the losses that they might feel based on like, oh, the person that's playing every new game that we put on the service. Yeah, it's that mentality of getting you into paying for it and then you just don't cancel it. That's Netflix model. That's uh, that, that, That's been the streaming model for years now. You pay for Netflix. You don't watch very much. They get you to come back so you don't cancel but they keep you engaged like they keep you engaged just enough. They know there's going to be people that are constantly watching and those are the people that they're going to lose money on. It's it's the reason why that stupid uh ticket system for theaters failed. Because they thought, "Oh, we're going to allow people to just pay a monthly fee and watch as many movies in the theater as they want." But people don't just go to the theater. Like, the only people that are going to go to the theater and pay for the service are people that are going to want to watch every movie. Yeah, there was it, nobody when, it requires, to... when it requires more than powering on a TV and loading an app. Yeah, it, it required too much engagement with the viewers, so the the only people that were going to take part in that, I can't remember what it's called, but that stupid ticket service that completely just failed there were, there were several. Money. There were several of them. I think AMC... But you know the one... Yeah, AMC had one and a couple others. I think AMC at least, like, it was like, they show enough weird stuff that, like, that was... A, a reasonable offering. You know what's funny yeah. is uh, HBO Max. Uh, going back to HBO Max, I think whoever's running their department is really good. For HBO Max subscribers, they were giving you like two tickets to go see the Matrix in theaters if you were had a subscription. Like that's smart. 
because then it gets people to go and maybe bring more people. So, I don't know. I, I think between, you know, what we've been forced into the last few years, I think that Game Pass is probably way ahead of its time. And eventually every system will have that. You know, Nintendo's going to have it in like 15 years. But Sony's going to get there where they're doing that. And this is probably them starting it. But I think eventually it does happen. Maybe not in the PS5 days, but maybe on PS6 that's that's a thing. Because I think Microsoft is, is in is in, you know, in the opening. They're like the, the trendsetter. They're going to be the one that started it. Because Game Pass is just too good. Like, and once once they have, like you said, they have that many people just consistently paying, you know, that 15 bucks a month, that revenue is going to be outstanding at some point. I'm, I'm still, I don't know when it's going to happen, but mark my words, we will see Xbox Game Pass on another system that is not an Xbox or Microsoft system. Yeah, I don't think it'll be PlayStation, but yeah. I could see Nintendo jumping on board with that. I could see a I could see one of these like third party retro consoles that are basically a PC trying to get a deal before Nintendo. Yeah. Put it on the Atari VCS. <laughs> it's something stupid like that, yes. Yeah, I mean it's gonna totally be on the Steam like Deck, so why not? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I think Drew's right. I think eventually Game Pass will be an app on your TV, just like Netflix is. I think. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to end up happening. And Do you I, realize the like the accessibility for that? Like, imagine a TV that just has a way to play video games. Like the TV comes with a controller or something. Yeah. You can just boot it up and subscribe, and you're playing fucking Halo without a console. Stadia. Yeah, but Stadia... Mm, Stadia but that was the, their attempt. That was their goal, but the problem is that Stadia is like just now releasing like fucking Paw Patrol. That's not exactly Sta- selling Sta- system. Stadia, Stadia was also asking you to pay for the hardware and then pay for a subscription and then pay for the games. And it wasn't built into the TV. It and was then it built... wasn't good. Yeah, and... well, there's that too. Like their selection and of games, they were old is games bad. sold at full price. And like, oh. that's the other thing is like, if you get Game Pass onto the TV, all you have to do is pay for the subscription. You don't have to pay for the game. That's where Stadia failed. Is they 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 do have that pro subscription, but they they break it down into two things. So you've got you can either buy Tomb Raider or you can subscribe and get Tomb Raider, but you can't subscribe and get let's say, you know, Rainbow Six. You have to buy that. And that's where the disconnect comes from. And on top of that, like I said, it wasn't a native app. You had to buy a Chromecast. And I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody who has a streaming device that has a Chromecast. They have a Roku. They have an Apple TV. They have a Fire Stick. But they don't have a Chromecast. Because a Chromecast is literally just cast your fucking phone to the device. Like, what's the point of that? You know, like why buy a streaming device if you're just using your phone to do it? I, I've never understood that mentality. But anyway, that's all I got. I don't have any emails or tweets, even though I asked for predictions for the Game Awards, which is on Thursday. Nobody cares about the Game Awards. Yeah. Not you know, you know what? You say that. You Jeff. say that, but everybody's gonna watch it. I'm not. Let's I, mean, I don't really anyways. care to watch it. I'll watch the trailers for the games. I mean, I'll turn it on and watch it. Like, I, it's cool shit in there. Like, there's gonna be new games that we see, and you know, I bet you. Fifteen minutes after I read the article that tells me about what new games were announced, and that's how I get my information. I don't know. I enjoy just sitting down and watching things. Sue me. Then I don't have to fucking. I'm going to tell you right now, there's there's going to be... There's good people on both sides, Jeff. I'm going to tell you something right now. And I guarantee this will happen. Friday, we're going to hear that more people watch the Game Awards this year than last year. Even though everybody online is saying, I'm not going to watch it. You're going to fucking watch it. I bet you. 
That's all I got, though. I don't have anything else. Whew. Big week for gaming. Everybody go download Halo on Wednesday. It's real good. No. Haha, uh-huh. I am. Yeah, th- you're uh-huh. such a liar. You totally didn't download Halo on Wednesday. Um. Yeah, uh, if you want to tweet at us, that N4G Podcast. If you want to follow any of us on Twitter, I'm at ZTGD. Anthony's a complacent robot. Drew is a DMO Fury. You can follow the site at ZTGD content. Shoot us an email, podcast at ZTGD.com. You know what's funny about the tweets? I got like 20 retweets for the show and not one reply. You got four retweets. All of which is everybody on this fucking show. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at mine when I mentioned yesterday that it was going to be epic today. Oh, yeah. I got like 20 for that one. And nobody tweeted to the show. Hell, Polly Mega retweeted that. I'm saying any comments for the show. Everybody's oh, well. at home watching the Game Awards. <laughs> uh, Phoenix Down, uh, sadly, Yakuza 3 episode dead. Yeah, we're going to do like a small little what we thought of the ending of Yakuza 3 and move on to Death Stranding. Unfortunately, we recorded an hour and eight minutes that lost. lost so I'm going time. to. Yeah, I'm going to suggest to Matt that we uh, we record individual recordings and do the the clap. The clap. And, and then I. <laughs> It was, that's the only way to do it. Because I am so sick of losing recordings. Yeah, I did not like that. That's why I always use Audacity, because it, it constantly backs up while it's recording. Yeah. If you uh, the, send me, if you both send me the recordings, I can edit it. I mean, I can do it. It's not that big of a deal. Matt, okay. can, Matt can throw it in the Dropbox, and I get it within 10 minutes, then just pull it into my Audacity recording and put it yeah. together. That's how I do it with like the music and shit. I just drop all the tracks into Audacity and then piece them together. That's exactly what I do. So... That's, what I, that's what I did last week when I had to delete Anthony's... <laughs> Redacted. Yeah. Your redaction that I had to go into the audio and cut out, which I don't know if you listened to the show, but it flowed really well with all that five minutes or so missing. Like I don't I, even know what we're missing here. I cut I cut a yeah, part of Anthony's rant out of last week's show. It was just unnecessary, and I went, "No, nah, I don't need. I mean, we don't need this in our lives. We don't need this. Just just cut it out." Yep. So I just literally it wasn't the first time I cut out. I cut out some things Jason said in the past, which was always fun. I know about those. <laughs> I was there for those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't like having to edit the show. That's why I try to keep it flow. But you know. That sounds like a Dr. Seuss rhyme. I like yeah. that. Man, I tell you, back in the day, when I um was getting into podcasting, you can't find the old podcast that I used to do. But we used to do a 30-minute podcast, and I was the one editing it. Anytime there was dead air, anytime somebody said the word, um, I would edit it out. Oh, there's no way in hell I would ever do that now. It took like two to three hours to edit a 30-minute podcast. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I'll this, tell you one thing. It sounded like a, a modern day YouTube video where there's so many freaking cuts and edits. Yeah, like I don't understand. I, I get it if like it's your livelihood, but come on, this show is just for fun and people like to listen. And I'm not going to spend. I already spend like an hour doing when the YouTube. When does the fun come? What's that? <laughs> I said, when does the, when does the fun come? When's the fun come. Oh, that's gross. Never. I already spend an hour on the YouTube video, and it, I don't actually do anything. I just kind of load it and then set it, and it takes like an hour to render. But I do that so people can listen to it on YouTube. But like the views on YouTube, it's really not worth it for me to do. I just do it. Yeah. I just fucking set it up and run it. I think mostly it's so that our YouTube channel doesn't get shut down in case we ever decide to use it again. Like we're constantly putting new videos up, so it's not like they can. Shut it down for inactivity, at least. But yeah, I was kind of shocked to find out that a big chunk of our listeners come from Spotify. That was was interesting to me. I, I did have one thing I wanted to point out. I don't know if you saw the tweet from Tate. Um, from his Spotify. 
his top podcast was us. Uh, he listened to 43 episodes at 5,715 minutes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for taking that much of your time. <laughs> oh, man. It is, it is a lot of time. That is a lot of time. But then again, we spend a lot of time making it. So. I don't, that's the thing I don't think people understand when they get mad when people don't do podcasts. I'm like, do you realize that we all have to take two and a half hours out of our day to go record this? You know? That's a long chunk of time. <laughs> like, think of all the things. You can watch a football game the amount of time it takes to record this podcast. Anyway, I don't have anything else. So unless you guys do, hold on, let's let's put in a bunch of dead air so we can make Drew go edit it. How's that? I'm, I'm not touching <laughs> this thing. You can forget that. <laughs> Imagine how long it would take you I'm to gonna do have to, I'm going to have to... I'm going to cut that out so I can use that for a soundboard. I'm not going to touch this thing. I'm not going to touch this thing. Can you imagine how long it would take to edit a two and a half hour podcast to remove all the dead air and the um? All right, I think it was you right there. Bye-bye. All righty. And it goes something like this.